This one's launched up there, and Damari almost makes the catch. It's tipped and caught. Touchdown, Trojans. Wow. Unbelievable. Westmoreland County High School football is on the air. This is 2023 Westmoreland County High School football. Live on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Presented by Elite Plumbing, Kitchens and Baths in the Latrobe 30 Plaza. How do you define elite? By Pit Stop Pizza and Sunoco, across from Derry Area High School. Serving legendary pizza since 1994. By Hus Chiropractic, celebrating 25 years serving Westmoreland County. By Innate Fitness, changing the game for a healthier mind and body. By Independence Health System, expert care here. By Debnars on Route 22 in Blairsville, the area's leader in pools, spas, and lawn equipment. By the Mike Reese Memorial Fund, advancing youth athletics from the ground up. By Amerisurve Financial, Get started with the Student Life Checking Account at Amerisurve. By the dental office of Drs. Hansen and Torba. Take advantage of our patient appreciation program. By the Matthew Merlin Funeral Home. A celebration of a life well lived. Trojans Football is also presented by State Farm Agent Sarah Crispin Thomas. Get to a better state with State Farm. By M&M Trucking, keeping pace with today's transportation industry. By the Cooperstown Event Center, for all your life events. By Play It Again Sports in Greensburg. Stop in, gear up, go play. By Building Bodies Fitness Center, renowned group fitness. By Barclays Dairy King, serving up the tastiest ice cream for over 40 years. By Keystone Kitchen, open for award-winning breakfast and lunch. By the F.O. Eagles, people helping people. By the McCabe Funeral Home, thoughtfully assisting the dairy community. By the Dairy Area Education Association, every student, every day, we make a difference. And by the Dairy Area Football Boosters. Now, the Westmoreland Sports Network takes you live to the stadium for tonight's pregame show. Presented by Innate Fitness in Latrobe. With Bob Lisinski, here's John Flickinger. From historic Owens Field in Apollo, Pennsylvania, the Westmoreland Sports Network presents Dairy Area High School Football tonight. The Trojans try and make it two conference wins in a row as they take on the Apollo Ridge Vikings. Good evening, everybody, alongside the coach, Bob Lisinski. I'm John Flickinger, and I sound like a broken record every week, but yet another beautiful night for high school football. Just absolutely gorgeous. There is a little bit of wind to deal with tonight, but other than that, it is just a uh, really nice night for high school football as uh, we get to call the game tonight from one of the oldest known stadiums in Pennsylvania. Owens Field, erected in 1919, it's still a natural surface located within the town of Apollo, the baseball field adjacent to it. Uh, you can see that and you will see that uh, throughout the evening. Just an old fashioned setting, although they did resurrect the field and make a ton of upgrades back in 2010. But coach, 1919, I love this historic type of field. You see homes around it, things like that. It's just a, really a cool place to play and what a beautiful setting. And really when they resurrected this place, they made a beautiful press box and something that the Trojans and Derry need to consider doing something like this because it is just uh, gorgeous and, and the atmosphere up here is, is really nice. Yeah, and, and of course they, they did put $3.5 million into the, the, the complex, but you know they, they pretty much um, gutted it and uh you know rebuilt the whole whole thing and they, they did a terrific job like i said nice setting it's, it's right along the highway here and and um you know a grass field which you don't see that too often you know because of the you know the uh you know turf field and, but uh you know great in great setting tonight here and the 
And it should be a good good one tonight between Apollo Ridge and, and the Dairy Area Trojans. Yeah, the Trojans uh, win last week against Yawk. We'll talk more about that as we are on the Innate Fitness pregame show. Apollo Ridge comes in here at 1-3 and three looking for, you know, a big victory tonight. They were uh, beaten last week by... Ligonier Valley 34 to 14 in a game where it was only a 13-7 game at the half coach but then Ligonier pulled away in the second half. Apollo Ridge lost some uh, players from last year. They lost a couple of good ones. Nick Kersey, their outstanding running back that's now playing and actually getting some time as a freshman at Duquesne University is one of the players they lost. They lost their quarterback Gage Thompson as well. Uh, but you know, they're looking for an identity right now. They know they have a pretty good quarterback, though, in the last name of Schrock, who's played pretty well. Yeah, he has. And, you know, uh, when you mentioned about them uh, losing a, you know, some of their, their good offensive weapons, I mean, they, they lost their, you know, their leading uh, rusher. They lost their quarterback. And they lost their, their number one uh, receiver, too. So they lost a lot of offense, but they do, do have a, a very good quarterback by the name of Carter Schrock. Um, he, you know, he played last year. Only a couple of games he got hurt, and that was the end of the season. But, you know, but this year, you know, um, uh, I mean, he's the main main man. You know, he's running the ball. He, he has 86 carries for 445 yards, and you know, like he he makes that team go. You know, so for the Trojans tonight, that's one of the keys is they they need to stop Carter Schrock. And they're very similar to Yawk, our Apollo Ridge, uh, as far as what they like to do. They run the football. They come right at you. Coach Arone mentioned they come with different formations, and they, they want to try to establish that in the trenches. And in the trenches is where the Trojans really have made their hay this season. They've been able to run the football, of course, with their workhorse, Ahmad Ward, and get it done there. They're going to have to do that again tonight and win that battle in the trenches. If not, it's going to be one of those tug-of-war type of games again. Yeah, I mean, it, it all starts up, up front, and, and you're right. I mean, the, you know, Trojans need to to win that battle. And um, Derry is, is averaging 192 yards per game on the ground. On the other hand, Apollo uh, Ridge, like you mentioned, they like to run too. They are averaging 163 yards per game. So both teams, they... They like to run, and it's going to come down to, again, you know, which offensive line is going to win that battle. Tonight our cameraman is John De Palma stepping up here. We thought we were going to bring this one to you on audio this week, but uh, we needed a camera guy. Coach Esposito, he's on his way to the game, but uh, he took his son Heath on a college visit today. So John De Palma stepped up, and we thank John so much. He's manning the camera. Don't be too hard on him tonight. This is the first time he's uh, done it, but uh, we're able to bring this game back to uh, the uh, Derry area uh, tonight. Last year, it was all Apollo Ridge, 49-14. to They defeated the Trojans, and it really wasn't even a game. As we mentioned, Kersey had a couple of touchdowns. Alex Worm, who's now a senior here for the Vikings, he had two touchdown runs as well, and he's hardly even touched the ball this season for the Vikings. Yeah, he had touchdown runs of 27 and and 48 yards. And, you know, when you look back at that game last year, it was 27 to 14 at the half. But then uh, Paula Ridge put three scores in, in in the third third quarter, and they ran away with it then 49 to, to uh, f- you know, 14. But, but, yeah, you know, when you look at uh, Worm, I mean, you know, he only uh, has um, – on it here uh, five you know five carries for six yards and um, you know he has three receptions for you know for 46 so um, you know compared to you know what he did in last year's game I mean he hasn't come up up to that standard yet you know for the first four games of the season but you know he is another weapon that they have we are on the Innate Fitness pregame show. Innate Fitness main drive in Latrobe is changing the game for motivating a healthier mind and body. And the Trojans last week, you talk about survival of the fittest. You know, Derry gets the football first. Yaw kicks off. Ahmad Ward scores a touchdown. Now, I have to say something here. Mike Arone told me the other day, and we did our coaches interview. You'll hear in a little while. He gave all the credit in the world to Coach Hissom. 
who's been around for a long time, and he's the special teams coach. That was designed. They saw on film what the Cougars were doing with their kickoffs and where they were kicking it almost every time, and they moved the mod up to that spot, and didn't the ball go right to him, and he takes it to the house. So kudos to Coach Hissom for pulling that one out, and uh, Coach Jerome wanted me to make sure I mentioned that tonight. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, that was a – you know, a huge point in that game, you know, right at the opening uh, kickoff. And, and um, you know, special teams accounted for, you know, basically two, two scores. You had that, that kickoff return by Ward, but also um, Colin Bush late in the game there. He, you know, he recovered the fumbled punt at the Yacht 18 the yard line, which led to a Trojan touchdown. You know, so, junior. you know, so the, the uh, special teams played a huge part in, in that win last week. Yeah, no question about it. And uh, also, we talked about Ahmad and uh, the hard runs that he had, but the really nice play, the two-point conversion where, you know, Bemo with a good play fake, and he might have underthrew a little bit, but Damari makes the big catch. Ahmad gets just enough for that defensive end to keep him away from uh, Mason on that throw. Everything worked perfect. I thought that was the perfect team play for Derry to win that game. Yeah, and his coach, you know, had had mentioned on a post game show that if they, you know, um, wouldn't have scored on a previous play, that was going to be their go go to play, you know, to try, you know, try to get that touchdown. But um, they they didn't need, need to do that. They they used it for the extra point, and uh, you know, couldn't have turned out better. You talk about both of these teams and how they like to run the football. Apollo Ridge rushes for 164 yards a game. Derry 192.8 per game. The difference is Apollo Ridge is giving up 176 yards on the ground. So, of course, if your coach John Skiba, who's been around here for a while, or any coach that scouts Derry, they're saying we need to stop 22 and go from there. Yeah, exactly, and 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 again, if we look back at the game last week, you know, um, during the broadcast, we had mentioned that you know Beeman was going to have to you know throw the ball somewhat, you know, to take the pressure off of Ward. You know, they did, they did do that. Um, I'm sure that they didn't complete as many passes as they had hoped, but they did show them something different, you know. And I think they need to do do that tonight because yeah, you know, Apollo Ridge is going to be king on on Ward just like the Trojans are going to be king on on Shrock. And Ahmad coming into tonight, 99 carries in just four games, 478 yards, six touchdowns. He averages 4.8 yards per tote. Mason Beeman, on the other hand, 22 of 51 through the air, 332. One touchdown, six interceptions. He's uh, 43% in the uh, pass completion percentage. And then Damari Robinson obviously leads the team in receptions with 196 yards and a touchdown. He also has a rushing touchdown and 74 yards. But, yeah, the Trojans are going to have to start getting some other guys involved. But I kind of like the way they played defense uh, last week when they had to. They had to come up with a big stop, and they did that. They got the interception from Barkley. I thought the freshman, Brady Brown, played a nice game. I thought Aiden Piper, the freshman, played extremely well. And they get a freshman back tonight in Max Doherty. Yeah, and, you know, as we've seen in the first, you know, few games, I mean, Max has made some great plays out there. And, uh, but, yeah, I mean, defensively, um, you know, the, the, they are starting to come up with some turnovers. There for a while, you know, um, they were turning the ball over a ton. And the defense, you know, was not, you know, creating turnovers. And, in fact, if you look at the turnover ratio for both these teams tonight, um, you know, both have struggled. You know, the Trojans are a minus five, and and Apollo Ridge is a minus eight in the turnover ratio. So both teams have turned the ball over a lot during his first first four games, and and that's something, you know, that – as we saw in the Greensburg-Salem game for, for Derry. You just can't, can't do that because you're leaving the team in, in the game. Yeah, no question about it. You look at tonight's game, Derry's 1-0 in the conference. That's all that matters right now. They have a chance tonight to go 2-0. and 
You talked about it last week, Coach. You said there's five teams that make the playoffs in this conference. How big is this game tonight? I know the playoffs are a long time away, and Mike Arone doesn't even want to talk about it, but we can. Right. And, you know, this really, you know, you get off to a 2-0 and start in the conference, and you got some tough games coming up, of course, but this is huge for the Trojans just like any other game. Oh, it sure is to go 2-0. Go and o. You know, uh, would be fantastic. You're knocking Apollo Ridge down to an 0 uh, 2 uh, record. So, I mean, you got a two game lead on, on them. But, yeah, there's only three teams in this conference do not make the playoffs. Again, because it's an eight team uh, conference. So, five go. If you have a seven team conference, only four teams go. So, you know, uh, you know if the Trojans can get off to a 2 and 0 uh, start, I mean, that's going to be. You know, a springboard for them. You know, down the road, it could, could, you know, could springboard them into the playoffs. We are at historic Owens Field here in Apollo, Pennsylvania. When we come back, you're going to hear from the second-year head coach of the Trojans, Mike Arone, here on the Innate Fitness pregame show on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Innate Fitness in Latrobe wants to help change your game. Innate uses a unique training experience utilizing professional creativity that will challenge each and every one of your fitness levels. Innate Fitness has several affordable programs to fit your budget. Join Innate today and take advantage of their strength, conditioning, weight loss, and flexibility programs. Let them put a plan together for you with a free evaluation. Also be sure to check out Innate's athletic training, baseball, and softball services online at innatefitnesslatrobe.com or stop on in and see our beautiful facility located on Main Drive in Latrobe. Stuck in a state of falling behind? Struggling to keep up with your kids, your finances, your insurance, your life? Then let State Farm agent Sarah Crispin Thomas in Latrobe, Pennsylvania help you simplify. Because with Sarah handling your auto, home, and life insurance, you'll have more time to handle everything else. Because adding State Farm policies can earn discounts that could add up to 40%. Call State Farm agent Sarah Crispin Thomas today and get to a better state with State Farm. Discounts may vary state to state. Industrial Packaging Supplies in Blairsville specializes in product protection for all shipping needs. IPS is one of the largest manufacturers of industrial shipping reels and converters of interleaf paper in the Northeast United States. IPS also supplies a variety of packaging products, including various sizes and quantities of boxes, tape, flow pack peanuts, and corner protectors. Industrial Packaging Supplies, Westinghouse Road in Blairsville. Call 724-459-8299. Independence Health System Westmoreland area believes high quality sports medicine isn't just for the pros. You don't have to be an elite athlete to access an impressive lineup of specialists whose care suits your individual lifestyle. Serving more than 5,000 student athletes in Westmoreland County, you can be assured of getting first string varsity care. They trust us and so can you. The Center for Sports Medicine and Independence Health System Westmoreland area. Expert care here. This is the Coach Mike Arone Show, presented by M&M Trucking in Latrobe. Your shipment is our top priority. Here's John Flickinger and the head coach of the Dairy Trojans, Mike Arone. Mike, congratulations once again on winning that opening conference game. Certainly a big one to get off on the right foot. Not a Picasso by any stretch, but you did the necessary things to secure victory. We did. I was proud of our guys again. You know, those those are the kind of games that will build character. Um, you know, hats off to Yawk again. They were tough. I thought they physically they, they outplayed us at times. But our, our guys did what they needed to do at the end to make enough plays to get a really close win. So we're real happy with it. What are some of the things that you saw on film that stood out and some other things that you really harped on and worked on this week? Yeah, I thought, again, you know, we, our, our week of practice last week wasn't great. Um, it was okay, but we had some guys who missed some practice time because of injuries or illness, So, and, and we thought at that time, okay, we'll sit them out, get them better. And, and I, I just don't think we practiced real well. Um, man, we played high on the line of scrimmage, so we've worked on – Coach Mole has worked on that uh, – a lot with our linemen this week of just, you know, getting back to the basics of playing low, firing off the ball. We didn't tackle real well at times again, so another focus on that. That seems to be a focus every week. So so those are just a few things that I, that I think, ever again, and what's good is everything's correctable. 
Um, I think we made those corrections, and th- this week's practice has been much better. One of our best so far this season, by the way, so we're, we're, we're happy with where we're at. What was nice is after Ahmad's kickoff return for a touchdown, Yawk drives the football down, they score, and then it was kind of a stalemate for the rest of the first half. Second half, they come out and you know take control of the game, but you fought back. That was big, and you talk about character. I mean, you certainly build it there, you know, to come back and your touchdown down, and you fight back, and then at the one forty three mark, you score the touchdown that ultimately wins the game for you. Yeah, and I, I love to see that out of our guys. Like it's just great to see that. Even though you would like to play better overall, uh, you're in a dogfight like that. And yes, we we talk about how the the first drive, whether it's offensive, defensive of the of the third quarter, is the most important drive of the game. And they took it right down and scored. But our guys, man, they, they're, they're, they're digging down and they're finding something there. And I, and I think they're starting to, to realize, you know, that they can be in pretty much any game we play. So that's where we're hoping we're heading. I know we talked after the game about Ahmad and how many hits he took and, you know, how he had the tough yards. And I know he's certainly your workhorse. That's not a secret to anybody. But I also can see offensively, because he does play both ways and he's out on the field most of the game, that you're trying to get some other guys involved in the offense as well. Ahmad in four games, 99 carries. You know, can he sustain? I know he's your workhorse, but I'm sure you want to get some other guys going too. Oh, absolutely. That's that's always been the plan. And um, even, you know, Barks, Colin Barkley was banged up last week with an ankle, so didn't want to put too much of the load on him. But some of the younger guys, like Brady Brown, Max Doherty coming back now from injury, Justin Papuga, um, even Damari. We've always talked about we've got to find other ways to get the ball in Damari's hand. So that's obviously something we're working towards offensively. But, yes, we, we do realize that, and, and Ahmad has been the workhorse, and, and, and he just keeps grinding, man. But, but yeah, we definitely want to take some of the load off him offensively and, and, and let some other guys make plays. I know he made a couple of mistakes in the penalty department, but, man, Brady Brown was all over that field, the freshman. Oh, he was. He was. I know after watching film and, uh, you know, Coach Hissom said, I, I think he had 20 or 25 tackles. I mean, it, the kid is, as a freshman, you don't see it a lot that, that playing at the level he's playing at. So we feel very fortunate. Um, and he's really becoming the, the, the leader of our defense. He makes all of our calls. Um, you know, emotion-wise, he's the kid – pre-game who's who's really way way up high so it, it's great to see out of out of such a young kid like that and as you mentioned and i heard earlier today that uh, max Stockerty is certainly going to play tonight that that helps you coming back because i thought he's played pretty well i know another freshman but you've been getting good play out of your young guys i know piper made some plays last week as well yeah we have and that's again that's man that's a that's a great thing to have on our team where not only were we playing freshmen because we have to I feel like we're playing freshmen because they're the best at their position right now. So that's a great luxury for us because you can imagine having those guys not only on the field now, but for three more years afterwards. So same thing with Mason Horwath starting to come into his own yeah. free safety. He's going to see a lot of time at receiver this year with or this week with uh, with Jonathan Shoemaker's injury. So, um, yeah, I can't say enough about all those guys, all those freshmen. They're football players, man. They know the game. They love it. They understand the game. And uh, we feel real fortunate to have them. And I know BMO is not your prototypical quarterback because he hasn't played it long enough. But that's a big play in a big situation last week for that two-point conversion. And there's so many things that go into that, right? I mean, you know, Yawk might be thinking, here comes Ward. You know, you get the play fake to Ward. Ward does a good job of just getting enough of that defensive end that's, uh, you know, crashing, you know, trying to get to Beeman. And, you know, he unloads the ball, maybe a little bit underthrown, but then Damari makes the play. I mean, that is a total team play to win a football game. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was executed, not to perfection, but good enough that it worked. Again, Beemo did a real nice job, and I think I said this on the broadcast last week. We we run that in, you know, practice every Thursday. We, 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 we rep it, and typically Beemo overthrows that ball. So I don't know if that was in his head a little bit that I better not overthrow this. Uh, he actually said to me, uh, he, he was so wide open, I wanted to make sure that I... And then Damari just makes a phenomenal catch. So it worked out. We felt confident in that play, and, and the kids executed. Well, you know, Mole in joking, Coach Molnar <laughs> said, I heard Coach Arone threw me under the bus and said I didn't want to, want to run the play. He said, the reason was is because when we repped it in practice, we could never get it right. Well, that's good that you got it right in the game, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I got crap from... From Mole, uh, you know, just yesterday about throwing him under the bus as the only coach who didn't want to go for two. But hey, that's that's okay, and I understand his 
where he's coming from too. And we just, you know, myself and Ox talked even prior to scoring that, hey, if we score here, we're going for two. And, and we both we both agreed. There was there was no question. We had confidence in our guys that, that, that they would get it done. And certainly an outstanding play call uh, at that moment, Coach. Tonight, you're going to see a lot of what you saw last week. Apollo Ridge likes to run the football. They run it straight at you. They got a quarterback, such as uh, the Cougars did with Kuroda. Uh, Schrock that runs the ball hard. Statistically, he's by far their best runner. Are we going to see kind of the same attack from them as you saw last week? Yeah, um, they'll give you some more multiple formations, so things you have to be prepared of. They like to out leverage you over load ways. Um, they'll give you shifts, motions, but yeah, it's a lot of the same stuff. Schrock, Schrock is a he's a load, uh, just like just like Kuroda was last week. So we're, we're definitely going to have to make sure we tackle, we gang tackle. But they also, you know, they have some good skill players. Some other big backs, so they present they present a lot of problems um, and just a lot to prepare for. But I think we've done a good a good job this week of preparing. You didn't turn it over last week. That had to have been a big plus, you know, when coming in and uh, you know watching that film with the kids. I mean, certainly you got a big turnover in that game. You got a turnover to seal it. Um, but obviously, you talk about it every week. Turnovers are such an important part of the game. And do you feel that you know tonight, if you can just play your game and not turn the football over, you'll be in pretty good shape for that second conference win? Yeah, I mean, I think we have to look at it, and we, our team has to look at it. That's, that's where we're at right now. We've won a couple games. We've, we've shown that we can compete. And, yes, if we do the little things and take care of business, then, yeah, we should be in every game. Um, that, that's our mindset, and I think what's nice to see is that's the mindset of our team too. So, yeah, it was great. We didn't have any turnovers. I didn't like the penalties last week, so now we have to work on that. Always something to work Always on. Always a working Always progress. something to work on. Um, never be satisfied. We try to stress that to our kids. But, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I think our kids are starting to gain confidence and see that they're a pretty darn good football team and they can, they can compete in this conference. Obviously, we talked about Max being back this week. Is anybody else banged up or are you pretty much ready to go? No, I, we pretty much have, um, you know, everyone else, everyone else back. Bark, Barks is still kind of nursing that ankle, but we've got it braced up. We've got it taped up. Um, besides your, you know, your typical bumps and bruises, um, I, you know, I do another freshman, Anthony Frank, who was seeing some time for us. He did, he did get, he got banged up in a JV game, so he won't be available tonight. You know, we'll be excited to get him back. Um, but no, we're, we're pretty healthy on the road again tonight. Last time you went on the road, you played a really good football game, you know, despite the turnovers that, that hurt you against South Moreland. So hopefully we can follow that up with a good one tonight and get that second win. Good luck tonight, Mike. Thanks coach. Looking forward to it. That's head coach Mike Arone, and we are on the Innate Fitness Trojan pregame show here from historic Owens Field in Apollo. Stay with us. We'll be back with more right after this on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Debner's is not only the area's leader in pools and spas, we're that too, but we're so much more. Debner's can help you clean up those pesky leaves this fall or the unforgiving snow coming this winter with our full line of leaf and snow blowers. We're a certified dealer of Still, Bravely, Cup Cadet, and Toro premium outdoor power equipment, so you know you're getting the best at Debner's. Debner's Pools, Spas, Lawn and Garden on Route 22 in Blairsville and Shelley Drive in Indiana. Visit Debner's.com. Building Bodies Fitness Center is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, helping the community achieve their fitness goals. Building Bodies features the trademark Top Gun Fitness Program coached by Gary alum Sean Horwell. It incorporates group personal training, youth fitness, and sports-specific training. Or try our renowned group fitness like Zumba, spinning, step, yoga, and more. Building Bodies is also home to Rough House Wrestling, a K-6 wrestling club led by former Trojan State Champ Travis Schaefer. Go Dairy Trojans from Building Bodies Fitness Center. The dental office of Drs. Hansen and Torba is excited to offer our patients same-day crowns with CEREC by Serona. With the integration of CEREC, ceramic crowns can now be accomplished in just one visit and without a temporary. Doctors Hansen and Torba is also proud to offer our patient appreciation program for patients who don't have dental insurance. Just pay the annual enrollment cost and enjoy incredible discounts on everything from cleanings to root canals. Doctors Hansen and Torba, Route 217, Gary Township. John. 
Bob Kicker, Bob Lisinski, rejoining you from Owens Field as we get set for Trojan football here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. The uh, teams yet to emerge from the locker room. You heard from uh, Coach Arone and the importance of uh, obviously this game uh, tonight, uh, Coach, and he wants to see the guys up front do a better job. He thought that uh, they struggled last week, and I know he some sickness and things like that went through, but he's not going to make excuses for that. He knows that tonight he has an opportunity to go 2-0. and You're on the road. The last time they played on the road, they didn't do a bad job. They just turned it over too many times. They're going to have to get that same type of performance tonight and obviously another good one from Ahmad Ward. Yeah, they gotta, they got to be able to, you know, control the ball and um, – and you know, open up up the line there, John. Open up, open up the holes. But um, you know, last week, you know, was the first game I believe that they did not have an offensive turnover, and and they need to do do that again. But um, yeah, I mean, they you know they they played well last week in, in in spots. But again, you know, you look back at that first half last week, John. They had no first downs. And you know they 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 just can't do that again tonight. They got to be able to control the line of scrimmage, and uh, and then you know move the ball on the ground with uh, you know with Ward and and others. Yeah, you definitely have to be better than that. You have to move the football. You have to control the football. We'll see what kind of special plays are out there uh, tonight uh, for the Trojans, but. They're going to try to mix it up uh, uh, tonight, and you know Mike did say that you know he was happy with the week of practice, and uh, he thought it was probably the best week of practice they've had, and that's you know certainly uh, important heading into a game like this. Let's look at the uh, Trojan starting lineup uh, for tonight. Uh, offensively, they'll go at center with Ethan Bendel, the 5'9", 210-pound junior. Colin Barkley at one guard spot, 5'9", 200 junior. Jason King, the 6'2", 235 senior at the left guard. Maddox Bush, the left tackle, 6'6", 298, senior. Owen Monick, 6'1", 220, junior. Colin Bush will be at one wide receiving spot, the 6'3", 215, senior. Damari Robinson on the other side, 6'1", 165, junior. And they will be receiving the ball from Mason Beeman, the 6'5", 200-pound senior, as I mentioned in the outset of our broadcast, 332 yards through the air, just one touchdown. He does have six interceptions on the season. Nathan Barkley, who's nursing that ankle injury, is going to play again tonight. 5'10", 180-pound senior. He averages 7.4 yards when he touches the football. Ahmad Ward, 5'11", 200-pound senior, 478 yards, six touchdowns coming into this one. And Justin Papuga will also run the football tonight, the 5'10", 185-pound sophomore as the Trojans enter the field tonight for this Allegheny Conference battle between... Derry and Apollo Ridge. And also uh, uh, for tonight, something to look uh, at, Coach, is the fact that Gabe Guess, their kicker, first-year kicker for the Trojans, has done a pretty nice job. Seven for eight in PATs. Could it come down to a kick? Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, we've seen him do the extra points. I mean, he, he has a good leg. Um, you know, he hasn't uh, uh, you know, tried a um, you know, field goal yet this year. But, but, you know, one thing, too, you know, we talk about the kicking game, John, you know, there was there was um, three times last week. Um, you know, when the Trojans were in their own, own territory and they went for it on fourth down and did not punt the ball. Um, now, um, only one of those um, drives did did result in uh, in in, in York, uh, scoring a touchdown. But you know, that's something we got to you know kind of keep an eye on. You know, that uh, well, the, are the Trojans getting comfortable enough with their punting game? To, to be able to punt now, or are they going to continue to go for it in, you know, in, in their own territory on fourth down? Yep, that's a great point, and we'll see what happens because they did get some uh, pretty good punts last week from Mason Horwat. He was able to, you know, at least uh, get rid of the uh, football and not have a return, and that's going to be important for tonight. The Vikings head to the field, and when we come back, we'll have an opening kickoff from Owens Field here on the Westmoreland Sports Network on another gorgeous night for high school football. Stay with us. We shall return right after these messages as we get set for high school football on WSN. How do you define elite? At Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in Latrobe, we define elite by offering the highest quality brands for kitchen and bathroom remodeling in Westmoreland County. Brands like Moen, Toto, and Cambria. 
Meet with one of our incredible designers who will help you choose a stunning cabinet design for your new kitchen or luxurious showers and bathtubs for your new bathroom. Call Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths for a free estimate at 724-205-6947 or visit our vast showroom in the Route 30 Plaza in Latrobe. Hey Trojan fans, this is Mike Moxenchuk, president of the Dairy Area Education Association. The DAEA would like to wish the Trojan football team, cheerleaders, and marching band best of luck this season. We strive to make a difference in our students' lives and prepare them for the challenges and successes that lie ahead. The Dairy Area Education Association. Every student, every day, we make a difference. Hi, I'm Brian Krause. And I'm his wife, Lori. And, and we're, we're the, the owners, owners of Keystone, Keystone Kitchen, Kitchen in New Alexandria. Alexandria. We serve up the most delicious hot homemade food you'll find anywhere, like our fresh handmade burgers, hot sandwiches smothered in gravy, and homemade desserts. And we haven't even mentioned what brings people in from far and near, our incredible made-from-scratch breakfasts. When you come in and see us, we want you to feel like family as soon as you walk through our doors. Everything at Keystone Kitchen is made with love, and we want to pass that on to you. Keystone Kitchen is located on Route 22 in New Alexandria. We, we hope, hope to, to see, see you soon. soon. Welcome to the Cooperstown Event Center in Latrobe. The Cooperstown Event Center has seating for up to 300 guests, making it a perfect fit for wedding receptions, team banquets, parties, and wedding and baby showers. To book your special event, call 724-539-3383 or visit cooperstowneventcenter.com. The Cooperstown Event Center, Thomas Street in Latrobe. For all of your life events, go Trojans from the Coop. Here we go, Trojans and Vikings tonight on Westmoreland Sports. Thank you so much for joining us here as the sun uh, begins to uh, set and the Trojans will be kicking off and guests will be doing the honors for the Trojans and the wind is uh, swirling here. See if he kicks it deep, deep tonight. You know, last week he did and they did a lot of squib kicks. Hayden Johns, Alex Worm are both deep and it is going to go to 25 Hayden Johns who takes it at the 12 yard line. And Johns is going to have some room. He gets the corner and he turns it and he is going to be tackled on the far side of the field but not before getting to the 36 yard line. Good return and a good block out there for the Vikings. Brady Aliff makes the stop for the Trojans, number 40. And the Vikings have good field position to start their first possession. We talked about the quarterback, Carter Schrock. And he's uh, pretty much been their offense. He had a knee injury. He was out for 2022. He has 445 yards on the ground, five touchdowns in the first four games. He's thrown only for 158 yards. They don't throw much do the uh, Vikings and they give you all kind of different formations and there's an illegal one I think right there that's the uh, referee throwing the flag let's see uh, what the call is to start and it's illegal formation called against oh, Paula Ridge I believe they were set and then they reset yeah. somebody moved yeah, we're gonna bring up first and, and 15 not Drop. the way that uh, you know the Vikings wanted to start off in a hole here Remember, we mentioned Alex Worm is not their leading running back, and he scored twice against the Trojans last year. It's Hayden Johns, and here's a direct snap, and carrying for nothing. The Trojans are all over that is Schrock. On that first and 15 play, he is going to uh, get nothing. Yeah, snap was kind of high. It might have slowed him down a hair, but the Trojans front line there did a great job. Colin Barkley on the stop. And gain of one, second down and 14. Second down, 14 yards to go. Once again, want to thank John De Palma for stepping up to do the uh, camera work tonight. Coach Espo is in the house. He just got here, but we weren't sure if he was going to be here in time. And John's doing the job for us as they reposition the tight end from left to right. And here is Alex Worm on the carry, and uh, Worm cuts inside, and Robinson brings him down to around the 40-yard line, so it's going to set up a third and long for the Vikings in this opening possession here of the first quarter. Trojan defense has been opportunistic the last couple of weeks with a couple of nice takeaways. 
course, this wind coach is blowing right into the windows, of course. Yep, blowing the papers <laughs> away. <laughs> blowing the papers hey, away. Why not? Uh, Something they're not used to here for the Vikings is throwing the football. They're going to have to probably here on this third down play. And Schrock is back, and he loads, and he throws, and the pass is incomplete. In and out of the hands on the near side of the field, Logan Bianco, the senior, the intended receiver. And it's fourth down. Yeah, and Bianco was only been a first down, but uh, he just couldn't, couldn't make the throw. Now the Vikings will punt, and it's Christopher Daly, the freshman at six foot, 200 pounds. He's a backup quarterback and an inside linebacker. He will boot it away as he stands at his own 26-yard line. Good snap from center, and a shanked punt. And that's going to go out of bounds and give the Trojans some outstanding field position here to start this one offensively. Ball at the 49 of the Trojans on this uh, first possession. You can't beat that. No, bad, bad first opening series for the Vikings here with the penalty on the first down and and then uh, not being able to move the ball and then a then a shank punt. So they're actually spotting it at the at the Trojan 48. And here they come. As Ethan Bendel comes out over the football. Trojans on the road here trying to pick up their second conference win in two tries. As Ward will carry and not a lot there. And he's wrapped up. Nice play that time. Penetration by Tyler Bartell, the 6'2 junior, 240 pounds. And I watched some film this week on this guy, number 71 for Apollo Ridge. He's made some big plays for them. And he comes up with a nice one there on first down. Yeah, 240, has some size to him, 6'2". Second down and 10. Mason Horwalk getting some action here as a wide out for the Trojans as Ward comes in motion. Single setback is Barkley. Bemo is going to throw. A lot of time. Steps up, throws, incomplete. He threw it behind Damari, who had all kind of room if he leads him on that throw. And it's going to be third down. There was a missed opportunity right there. Yeah, there sure was. Like you mentioned, John Bemo had a ton of time, and, and uh, Robinson was wide open and, and just could not connect. That was an opportunity you missed right there. So the Trojans had the football to start at the 48. They still have it there. Third down. Down and 10. Ward is single setback, and now Damari in motion, and the inside handoff going to go to the freshman, Brady Brown, who, or that's Barkley, I think, isn't it, yeah, Coach? Barkley. Barkley, yeah, Barkley, 13, not number one, and he gets it down to the 45 of Apollo Ridge. That's going to be a couple of yards shy of a first down, so the Trojans will certainly go for it here on fourth. Tyler Bartell. Now Brown checks into the game. Fourth down and three. Three yards to go for a first down just underway here from Owens Field. And if you joined us late, this field was erected in 1919. And it wasn't until 2010 where they made the updates, and it looks great as Ward is in the Wildcat here. They try to draw him off here initially. Good job by the Vikings not moving. Still a long count, and Ward's going to fake and keep, and he's going to get the first down and more! Ward to the 30, to the 25, and down to the 24-yard line. First down, Trojan. Yeah, Mark nice Ward. read there. Nice cut by Ward. There was nothing inside. He cut it out and, and picked up plenty of yardage for the first down. So the Trojans moved the chains. The first couple of downs did not look good, but the last two runs, one by Barkley for eight yards, and that one by Ward, has the football at the Viking 25-yard line in the Trojan opening drive. Yeah, 20-yard gain by Ward. This pass is caught by Colin Bush, and a flag going to be thrown in there by the referee. Not in a good spot for Derry. If you're a Trojan fan, that's probably going to be a hold coming back. In a play like that, you know, you know, it's probably going to come back. You know, Bush just needs to turn it up upfield, not you know, not to dance around a little bit. Yeah. Colin Bush came into the game with three receptions for 36 yards, and that one will not count because of the hold, and that will take the Trojans back 10 yards. 
Actually, they moved it back seven. They were to okay, 25. Yeah. That's right, from the spot. Yeah, so they're giving credit for, for a three-yard uh, completion, actually. So first and 17, and Coach Aron talked about it. He said, no, we didn't have any turnovers last week, but we had way too many penalties, and there's the first one of the night. Beam in a lot of time. This time he completes it to Ward in a nice open field tackle by Schrock. Carter Schrock, we talked about him on the offensive end, but he also leads the team in tackles defensively from his inside linebacker spot. And just a couple of yards on that game for Ward. It'll be second and 15. Yeah, see what the Trojans come up with here. If they'll if we'll put the ball in the air again or, or put it in Ward's hands and see if he can break one. This time... Robinson in the slot to the left, single receiver to the right is Bush. And Ahmad will break the initial tackle, spin off of another one, stay on his feet and pick up really nice yardage on second down and 15 as he gets inside the 25 to the 23 and yard line, maybe the 22. Here. Let's see where they spot it. They're actually gonna spot it at the 20. 10 yard pickup that, you know, we say this every week, you know, you know Ward runs really hard. I mean, it's hard for the first man to bring him down. He, he just, you know, has the power, the strength. Here's Barkley, inside handoff, not much there. Maybe a yard, that is all. A big fourth down now coming up for the Trojans. Good, good job by the Vikings front four. Give him about a yard. Fourth down and fourth. Fourth and four, the Trojans were in a fourth down situation earlier in this drive and they converted it on a run by Ward. Let's see what happens this time as Beeman looks to the sideline and the offensive coordinator, Joe Milan. And it's gonna be Ahmad swinging wide and he's going to get up inside to the 10 and the five and the score. Touchdown, Trojans. Ward takes it into the nice block by Mason Horwath out, out there on, on the edge to spring Ward for that 19-yard touchdown run. Absolutely, Coach. He sealed the edge for Ahmad, who cuts it up inside, and Derry takes the early lead. Guess will attempt the point after. Gabe Guess, the right-footed kicker, and make that eight for nine on the season as he knocks it through. And the Trojans have a seven to nothing lead. And we'll be back with a kickoff here on the Westmoreland Sports Network after these messages. M&M Trucking in Latrobe. Your shipment is our top priority. M&M Trucking provides a fleet of trucks capable of moving one or many loads of freight, concentrating in steel, lumber, mulch, concrete, precast forms, and more. M&M Trucking hauls loads to both warehouse facilities and direct to construction job sites. Call 724-539-1044 or visit lmmtrucking.com. M&M Trucking, spanning three decades, keeping pace with today's transportation industry. Hi, I'm Dr. Dean Huss. And I'm Dr. Melissa Bender at Huss Chiropractic. We are celebrating our 25th anniversary here at Huss Chiropractic. We provide convenient, quality care in a friendly and relaxed, patient-focused environment. Along with quality chiropractic care, we also perform affordable DOT physicals for CDL drivers by appointment or walk-in for your convenience. If you're in need of chiropractic care in Westmoreland County, look no further than Huss Chiropractic, 910 Industrial Boulevard, Loyal Hammond. Don't let pain adjust how you live. Live well adjusted. Kickoff return up over the 35 to the 36 yard Nathan line. As that was uh, prior, Number Nathan, one, the Brown six foot the freshman, and it was Brady Brown who made the tackle. And a great first drive for the Trojans, converting a couple of fourth downs and getting the first touchdown of the night. Yeah, just, you know, you couldn't ask for much more than that, you know. Ending the drive Who's with the, the TD. Let's see what the Trojan defense can do now. Carter Schrock, the quarterback, has Seth Mahaffey to his left. Mahaffey, not a lot of stats on the season. And Worm is out as a receiver to the left. 
talked about Corey McIntosh, number nine, coming into this game. I have yet to see him, Coach. Or no, he is on the wing to the left this time. And it will be Mahaffey carrying in the Trojan defense there to meet him. All over that play. That was Max Daugherty, the freshman. We talked about him coming back. And Max came up. Brady Brown as well. Two freshmen in on the stop for the Trojans. Gain of two, second down and eight. Paula Ridge coming into the night. 211 yards of offense per game. 164 on the ground. They've only thrown for 47 per game. They send two receivers to the left. One to the right. Schrock, empty backfield here with two wings to the right. And a fake to Mahaffey, and a flag is down before the snap. And that's going to cost them again. They moved up front yep. five yards. Penalty number two on the Vikings tonight. No, he's gonna be full a lot of scores play. we'll have for you tonight, courtesy of Shirley Flickinger and company. Want to say hello Seven to out. Paul Kuntz watching from home tonight. Go Trojans. My man, Paul, watching from home, so he must be home on a little bit of a weekend break from Slippery Rock University. Outstanding athlete at Derry. This time they go stack receivers to both sides. That's a different type of look, and Coach Aroon mentioned they have a lot of different ones. Schrock loads up, and now he's going to run the football. He does have some room, and there goes Carter Schrock. And Damari makes the uh, tackle hard. The bottom throw Schrock gets to the Trojan 41 yard line. He broke the initial line of scrimmage, coach, and then he had some room. And he ran, you know, right past Barkley. I don't know whether his ankle was bothering him or what, but, you know, and he couldn't couldn't make the move to make the tackle. That's, un, 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 you know, unlike Barkley, but but um, good job by Schrock. Moved the ball from their own 33 to, to the Trojan 41. Play is Jake Handel up front at the nose tackle for the Trojans. Barkley and Aiden Piper. Nathan Barkley and Brady Brown. Papuga will see some time at linebacker. It's Mahaffey again. And he's going to be wrestled down by Nate Barkley. After a short gain on first down. To the near side of the field that time. It's going to be second down and eight, just a gain of two. Seth Mahaffey, the ball carrier. Yeah, Ward come over and clean, cleaned up at the end. Claude Ward on the stop for the Trojans. To the game of three, second down and seven. Trying to look at the uh, stats there coming into the game. Seth Mahaffey had just four carries coming into tonight for 25 yards, and he's already toted the football twice here in the first quarter. Trojans lead seven to nothing. Yeah, twice for five yards. Once again, empty set. And again, it's Schrock carrying, and the Trojans have him this time. They wrestle him down. And that's Barkley that time coming up with a big play. And it's going to be third and long. Colin Barkley on the tackle. Colin Barkley that time was not fold. And we got a third down. That he threw him forward for a couple, so they're going to give him a. Uh, Two-yard gain, third down and six coming up. Four, one, three, six. And I'm sure they're in four-down territory here at the Trojan 37-yard line. This time, a half he lines up in the slot to the left. Again, empty set. Look for Schrock here. This is where he likes to improvise. And his pass is going to be caught. Trojan defender Brown fell down. And that pass is going to be caught by Corey McIntosh, the 5'11 junior, 219 pounds, and that moves the chains again for the Vikings. Coach, last week against Ligonier, the Rams scored first, and then the Vikings came right back and made it close. It was 13-7 at the half in that game, and then Ligonier pulled away in the second half. Yeah, just un unfortunate that Brown... Brown slipped, and, and uh, McIntosh was wide open. This time, it's Schrock the ball. fumbling the football. And let's see. Trojans say they have it, but 
the Vikings do fall on the football. That time they brought in Christopher Daly, a freshman quarterback, to go under center, and they moved Schrock to the backfield, and Schrock lost the football, but he actually moved it ahead to about the 22-yard line. So he gets four yards on the gain, even though he fumbled it. Yeah, yeah. They got a break there, you know, put the ball on, on, the, on the ground and able to come up with it. Daly is still in there. Two wings to the right. And Schrock's going to get the football, and Ward crashes in that time and brings him down another couple of yards there. It's going to set up a third and manageable here for the Vikings as now they go to a little bit different look with Schrock in the running back spot. Yeah, well, I mean, you've got to figure Schrock's your best uh, running back that you have. And so they're trying to get him the ball, you know, let him be, you know, be able to pick his hole. Two yards to go, two downs to get it. They also have a pretty good kicker. Gabe Suman, who's only missed one extra point, has yet to try a field goal. And now they change all type of linemen now. Unbalanced to the left, and they toss it to the left, and it's Schrock, and he has the first down and more as he drives his leg, still going to the 10-yard line. Yeah, I thought he was going to cut it to the out outside, but he, he, he saw that little seam. And, you know, pretty decisive cut and got the first down and picked up about eight. See if they drop the chains. I don't think so. I think they might be able to get a first. No, they do. They drop it just at the 10, right at the 10 yard line. They got to go the distance. The Schrock already up to 51 yards here, and, and we have 135 remaining here in the first quarter. Again, it's the freshman Daly under center. Two backs, and it's going to be the lead back McIntosh this time, and he's going to be taken down. Dzinski and company for the Trojans make the uh, tackle. Max Doherty. Barkley is in there as well, and it's going to be a short gain, second and goal from the eight. We'll have our... Independence Health System halftime show coming up in the Trojan Marching Band. We'll have a look at them again. Also have Coriana Whiteman and her Trojan game break. Derry leads it 7 to nothing on their opening drive, going 52 yards for a touchdown, but now Apollo Ridge coming back, and here is Schrock. And the Trojans won't give him a chance this time as he goes down after maybe a gain of one, and that's all. And it's Brown again, our player of the week a week ago, who came in to make the initial stop for the Trojans. And yeah, big, big third down. We are already under 30 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Yeah, Paul Rich started this drive with 6.25 remaining here in the second quarter, so they've... They, they've had the ball. They're going to run out the clock for the, for the remaining 10 seconds yep. left here. But but they've uh, you know run 6.25 so far off on, on this current drive. We kind of figured this was going to be a fast-moving game. First quarter in the books already. Derry 7, Apollo Ridge nothing. We'll be back with second quarter action on WSN after this. The Matthew Merlin Funeral Home in Derry provides individualized funeral services designed to meet the needs of each and every family that comes through our doors. From casket choices to funeral flowers, our staff of dedicated professionals will help you through all of the planning of the funeral service. Please call us at 724-694-8331. The Matthew Merlin Funeral Home on North Chestnut Street in Derry. A celebration of a life well lived. State Representative Mike Reese was a great advocate for the kids in our community. He felt athletics were a vital tool in raising healthy, happy kids. The Mike Reese Memorial Fund offers grants to local youth athletic organizations so that every kid has a chance to play. Funding is available for new equipment, registration fee offset, facility improvements, and more. Visit MikeReeseMemorialFund.com to apply. Alongside Bob Lisinski, John Flickinger back with you. John De Palma on the camera this evening. The Trojans lead 7-0, but Apollo Ridge is on the march. And yeah, they got two downs to pick up six yards. Gabe Suman, their kicker, has not attempted a field goal yet this season. 
We'll see what happens on this third down play as the sun is setting. And still remaining in there is Christopher Daly, a quarterback. And Schrock's now going to go in motion to the right. Let's see if they try to get him involved. They are. They're going to go fade route. Schrock, and he makes the catch, and he's in for the touchdown. It was Max Doprak again over there with good coverage. But he got out jumped. He got out fought for. And Schrock makes the catch for the touchdown. Very athletic play to at least uh, get one foot in there. And it's 7-6. Gabe Suman's kick. Oh, I think he missed it. No, he got it just inside that left upright. Just inside. And it is a 7-7 seven, seven game as Daly throws his first uh, touchdown pass, the freshman. And it is a 7-7 seven, seven game here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. We will return in 30 seconds right after these messages. Hi, Westmoreland Sports fans. This is Al Gallardo, financial advisor with Lincoln Investment and longtime Westmoreland County resident. Whether it's a traditional or Roth IRA, 403B or 457 plan, mutual funds, ETF stocks, or bonds, I can help you navigate the markets and assist you in achieving all of your goals. Call me at 724-309-8337 or email me at agallardo at lincolninvestment.com and we'll get started together. Advisory services offered through Capital Analysts or Lincoln Investment Registered Investment Advisors. Securities offered through Lincoln Investment Broker Dealer Member FINRA SIPC. Well, Coach, we said it. Uh, Carter Schrock was the offense coming into this game for Apollo Ridge, and he's done it all. He was at quarterback for most of that drive, and then the uh, back half of it, he ends up catching the touchdown pass. Yeah, I mean, you know, he makes that offense go. Suman's kick's going to take a bounce, and it's going to be uh, handled there, and it's Horwat on the return, and Mason gets to the 30-yard line, and that's where the uh, Trojans take over as the wind continues to uh, kick up here. Early moments of the second quarter, we have a 7-7 game. Avery Grant on the tackle to the Vikings. It's a good answer by the Vikings, though. They, you know, they marched that ball in 64 yards on, on that drive to tie the score. A couple of scores for you. Latrobe leads Laurel Highlands 10 to nothing in the second quarter. Thomas Jefferson trails Bell Vernon 6-0. That's a big one on the Westmoreland Sports Network first quarter. Ahmad gets the carry and uh, breaks the initial tackle, stays on his feet and gets about eight yards up over the 35 to the 37. Ahmad Wars so the Trojans the trying to uh, answer back Seth now. Mahaffey on the tackle for the Vikings. Mahaffey made the uh, tackle. On the play, second and two. Eight yard game for the Trojan senior who came into the uh, game with 99 carries and He's added a few more of those uh, tonight, the workhorse. This is the inside handoff to Barkley, and he has open running room into the secondary. And on the he ball. fumbles the football, though, and I think he got back on it, luckily. He lost it, and he gets back on it. you got to hold on to it, no question, Coach. And he was loose in the secondary for a Trojan first down to the 44 of the Vikings. They're going to keep two hands on, on that ball. It'll be first and ten, Derry. Again, Apollo Ridge has been shredded this season in the first four games on the ground, and the Trojans are doing it right now to them but in a 7-7 game. And here's Ahmad, and nice little jump step to the 39. Looked like he was only going to get a yard or two. He ended up picking up about four. Tackled by James yeah, yeah, you're right. It looked like he was going to be tackled at the line of scrimmage, but uh, he was able to you know, pick up four yards on that play. Second down, six yards to go. Trojans trying to answer the last drive by Apollo Ridge. I love this setting at this field, don't you? Yeah. I was always the press box, is, it feels like we're closer to the field. You're right. Toss to Ahmad, he tries to get the corner, but Schrock will not allow that. And now Schrock's going to help him up. It wasn't a late hit. He just kind of shoved him right before the out-of-bounds, and Ward went hard to the sideline. And now 
Carter, Carter goes and helps him up, but that's uh, actually going to be a loss on the play for the Trojans, set up a third and long. Yeah, they're spotted at the 44, so a loss of four. That just wasn't, wasn't there. You couldn't get the corner. First quarter flew on by. Ten minute mark of the second quarter and Bemo's pass is caught by Bush. And Colin Bush has a first down in more as he was able to get away from the initial tackler and he gets to the 25 yard line and it's first down Trojans. First catch of the night, actually second catch, first one that counts for Bush as the uh, first catch he made was taken back on a uh, holding penalty. On well, the game, three yards on that first first one. The coaches up here were calling for a fumble. Yeah, I think it was a little bit late there, but Worm made the tackle, by the way. But Schrock also came over but to the 26-yard line. Trips to the left this time, and I'm on. Exploits a hole, he's to the 10 and he's fighting his way down to the nine yard line. First and goal, Ball Trojans. On the run. Yeah, he's, and he saw the That's end zone there, John, and uh, no, I thought he was gonna, gonna get there, but, be a first down but he moved carry. the ball about 16 yards. First and goal from the Viking nine. Nice job up front by the Trojans and that offensive line moving people again. Ethan Bendel at center. Barkley and Monick on, on that right side. Offset eye this time behind Beeman. And there's the inside handoff and Barkley's tripped up. And again, that was big number 71 in there, Nathan Tyler Barkley, Bartell. The ball carrier. The 6'2 junior. Tyler Bartell. Short gain, it'll be second down. Like actually, no, loss, no, gain. no gain. Second, second and goal down, from the nine. Got to credit, the, you know, with the Vikings, John. I've noticed on their tackles, uh, they're always going for that ball, you know, and and uh, you know you teach that, and, and they've done a good good job. Yep, absolutely. As Ward is the single setback this time, and Beeman on a quarterback keeper drives his way down to the four. Nice call that time, and King on Ward. Beeman takes it that time, and the Trojans have a third down and goal from just inside the five yard line. Yeah, Beeman hasn't run the ball much at all, all this year. I mean, you know, most of his carries have been been just basically, uh, you know, going to scramble. Yeah, just 33 yards coming into tonight on 21 carries. But that's a positive one. They'll mark it just inside the five. Ward and Barkley will be positioned in the backfield together here. Big play for the, the Paula Ridge defense. Beeman's rolling left, throws the pass, it's caught, and touchdown, Trojans! Ward out of the backfield, and Beeman put it right on his numbers. And Ahmad scores his second, this time through the air, and the Trojans take a 13-7 lead. Yeah, when he threw that, I thought that there's a chance it might have gotten gotten picked, but, but like you said, he put it right on the money, John, and... and um, Good answer by, by the Trojans. They, you know, they marched up all 70 yards. Sacco will hold. Guess will try to make it nine in a row, or nine uh, extra points, and he does. It wasn't a pretty kick, but it got the job done, Coach. And that'll give the uh, Trojans a 14 to hey, seven lead. 7 At the 739 mark out. here Gary of quarter number two, the Trojans now lead it 14 to 7. We're going to step out for 30 here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. We'll be back right after these messages. At Pitt Coco, you play and we pay. That's right, over $10,000 a week paid out in the Pennsylvania Lottery. We also offer your favorite cold beer and hard ices, featuring five flavors including blue raspberry, blackberry, and Long Island iced tea. Pit Stop also offers a full menu of delicious foods, from their legendary pizza to their mouth-watering jumbo wings, gourmet burgers, and chicken sandwiches made from scratch. Visit or order online, or just stop in anytime. Located across from Derry High School on Route 982. I want to thank all of our fine sponsors. We'll be giving away our car wash from Tidal Waves coming up here later in the second period. And 
Gabe Guest kicks off. The Trojans now lead it by the score of 14 to seven. And Worm fumbles the return, but then he comes up field to the 28 yard line and does get some positive yardage out of it. Good answer for the Trojan offense. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, you know, 70 yard drive there, and and um, you know that's what you need need to do. Fast moving second quarter here too with 7.36 remaining in the first half. Trojan defense now will look to make a stop and you got a key on number eight. He's been everything here for Apollo Ridge this season and tonight. He's back at quarterback. And McIntosh will carry on first and make the uh, big hit, big stick on him. And again, it's Brady Brown coming from that inside linebacker spot. And he's uh, picking up where he left off a week ago, Coach. Yeah, yeah, Brady's been all over the field. and You know, you, you wouldn't know he's a freshman. He was our Pit Stop Pizza and Sunoco player of the game a week ago for his ability to fill the hole and make some tackles defensively. The freshman in on another one. Four-yard gain, however, for McIntosh. Second down and six. And Schrock again will take the uh, snap. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. McIntosh in the backfield with him. And a fake and a keep by Schrock. And he's fighting, he's fighting, but he goes down. The Trojans and Barkley would not let him go that time. And if he does, Schrock has some extra yardage, but a nice job by Colin. And he makes the tackle. It's going to set up a third and three. A nice block here by Corey McIntosh. Right in the backfield there, or, or um, Schrock would have been tackled for a loss. Third and three, and you see the brace on the left knee of Carter Schrock. He missed all of last year with that knee injury, Coach, and he worked real hard to come back. See if the Trojan defense can stiffen here on this third and short, showing blitz from the linebacker spot, and Schrock is going to get out of there to the right. He has room to run, but he's going to throw it down deep, incomplete. Wow. Wow, he could picked up the first down, but he tried to go deep. The receiver down there was Logan Schrock, and he had a couple of steps, but it was uh, thrown wide of the intended receiver, and I believe Logan is the younger brother of the quarterback. He's only a freshman at 5'7", 135, but Coach, he had a step or two on the defender. Yeah, he did. You know, he was out there. It had been a, been a huge gain. On the other hand, though, too, you know, Schrock could have, uh, you know, turned the corner there, and he would have had, had the first down yeah. very easily, but, uh, you know, both both cases didn't happen, so here we go. Fourth down for the Vikings. And they're going to go for it from their own 36-yard line? Maybe. We'll see. Schrock is not the quarterback here. It'll be Daly again, and they're tight. And there goes Schrock in motion, and a flag flies, and the play clock ran out. I don't know if they got the timeout in time or not. The play clock ran out on the Vikings, and they will call delay a game, and now the punt team comes on. Yeah, coach is not happy. Third penalty of the night for Apollo Ridge. 6.04 mark of the second quarter. This game flying by. The Trojans leading 14 to seven. Couple of other scores, East Allegheny 14, Greensburg Salem nothing in the first quarter. Franklin Regional leads Shaler 14 to seven, big game there. Now 21 to seven, FR. Bell Vernon continues to lead TJ six to nothing. Pressure coming from Ward and the punt is off, but another not a good punt at all to the 45. The punt is down by number three, of the Vikings. The Trojans have outstanding field position again, up 14 to 7. 556 left here in this first half. Once again, coming up on our Independence Health halftime report, we will hear from the Trojan marching band and we'll recap the first half and talk about a few other things going on around the campus. And Coriana Whiteman will have her, her game break as well. As Ahmad cracks off the left side just for a couple, that that is all. Second down coming up, and let's give away our first car wash of the night from Tidal Waves, a precision uh, touchless car wash featuring state-of-the-art equipment, cleans your vehicle, seven high-velocity dryers, more than double the dryers used by the competition, and you can also utilize them for your fundraiser. You get 50% off each car wash you sell 
from Tidal Waves as BMO will throw out of the backfield and complete the Robinson, but he's wrapped up immediately. Nice tackle again in the open field. And uh, that was Schrock, who else, who comes up with the stop for a loss on the play. But you can visit the new location next to the pit stop on Route 982 across from the high school or the Latrobe area. If you're in need of a car wash, you can visit the Lloyd Avenue location for Tidal Waves. Flick2312 at gmail.com. That's Flick, F-L-I-C-K, 2312 at gmail.com for the car wash. First one of the night. Third and 11. Beeman loads up, throws it down the field among a crowd, and it's incomplete as Bush was down there among three Viking Basically defenders, and it's going to be fourth down. Yeah, you had a, you had a, you had a bunch of guys could have could have pulled that one in, John. It was it was like a hell mary almost, but uh, yeah, going to bring up fourth and fourth and long here for the Trojans. Here's one of those situations you talk about here. You have 11 yards to go. You can pin them deep. You're in their territory at the 46, but uh, Mike Arone has shown that uh, he has faith in his guys to pick it up. And they're going to go for it. Yeah. See here, I would probably punt. You're up by seven. And, um, you know, you might be able to pin them back, but look for Ward here. Damon, he wants to go deep for Robinson. He's there, and he can't pull it in. He was open. Beeman put it on the money, and Damari couldn't pull it in at the five. Incomplete. Boy, they went vertical that time. They were all headed down the field, and Mason put it right on the money, but Damari this time couldn't handle it. Yeah, put it there. And if you recall, in last week's game, there was a couple plays like that, too, that, that uh, you know, right off the fingertips, and, Yep, so good job by the, by the Viking defense. They uh, stopped the Trojans, and now they have decent field position at their own 46. Golden opportunity there for Derry, but slips away, and now, uh, as you said, the Vikings have a chance here with four and a half to play. Direct snap to Schrock, and Schrock dances his way to the 50. And Justin Papuga was in on that tackle along with Ahmad. The clock continues to churn as we approach the four-minute mark here of the second quarter and a seven-point lead for the Trojans. Remember, last week, Apollo Ridge on the road against Ligonier down 13-7 to at the half. Ligonier went on to win that 34-14. Brayland Enterprises, Saxon Heating and Cooling, 3.56 on the turning clock here in the, in the second quarter. Now a long count, and I think a timeout going to be called. Yeah. Timeout, timeout called by Apollo Ridge. We're going to take a timeout as well. We'll be back on the Westmoreland Sports Network with the score, Dairy 14. And the Viking 7. The McCabe Funeral Home has been thoughtfully assisting the dairy community in their time of need for over 45 years. The McCabe Funeral Home offers various funeral services, including traditional and non-traditional arrangements and pre-arrangements. They also offer a military funeral honor ceremony, which consists of the folding and presentation of the United States flag to the veteran's family and the playing of taps. Please visit McCabeFuneralHomes.com. The McCabe Funeral Home, West 3rd Avenue in Derry. Having a get-together for the big game this weekend? Come round to Roundhouse Pizza in Derry. Every Friday and Saturday at Roundhouse, a large one-topping pizza is just $10. In need of something bigger? No problem. Order the Roundhouse. 48 slices of pizza that's a true crowd pleaser. Roundhouse Pizza also has wings, breadsticks, hoagies, and salads galore. Call 724-694-0665. Come round to Roundhouse, East 1st Avenue, downtown Derry. Alex Worm on the receiving end of the Carter Schrock pass, and that's going to be good enough for an Apollo Ridge first down. And they have a new set of downs with 3.30 and turning as Horwat made the stop. But the Vikings on the march now. I want to congratulate Dave Vinapal, who was the uh, winner of our first car wash. Dave, a teacher at Derry area and a friend of mine, good guy, and he was the first one to email in. So Dave Vinapal gets the uh, car wash. 
longtime watcher of the Westmoreland Sports Network as Schrock will make the first man miss and Schrock is into the secondary and he gets down to the 24 yard line for another nice gain on first down and here come the Vikings. Yeah, a nice move by Schrock there. He, he found the opening and picked up 10 yards on that play. Also want to mention that one of our faculty members at Derry area, Brian Clausen, his son Alex is a sophomore on this team. He's number one in your program, 5'11", 150 pounds sophomore. We saw him last year as a holder on uh, extra points and he's a part of this Apollo Ridge team. As Schrock will be back there as a s empty backfield. And he's just going to run to the... the left, and he goes down. Nice job by the Trojans there. They stack him up, and guess who? Number one, Brady, Brady Brown. Brown. <laughs> Carter Schrock is brought down behind... Yeah, I think that was, that was going to be, be a pass Cody attempt there, but uh, at had the pressure. For Derrick, three-yard loss on the play. Loss of second three, second down, 13 to go. Under two minutes now remaining, first half. Schrock with McIntosh to his right. He's back, he looks, he throws over the middle, incomplete. Looked like some contact there, nothing called. Fans unhappy. Yep, they wanted a. It was Jaden McCray, the sophomore at 6'2, who was coming across short, and Brown had the coverage. Now, Brady was called with a uh, interference call a week ago, and that time, nothing called. Third down, 13 yards to go. We're at 139 to play here in the second quarter. Trojans lead it 14 to 7. <coughs> Pardon me, Apollo Ridge, and they, they definitely want to get this in here. The tide at the end of the, the first half and you know get the momentum as far as the Trojans go you know they're they're just on, on the opposite side you know they they want to stop them and and uh, keep that that lead and keep the momentum yep. you know for themselves. Schrock came all the way to the sideline now he's down to five seconds on the play clock here down to three and two and he does get it off and he's back and he's being oh there's a hole oh, right oh, there yeah. there's a penalty and it's going to be picked off it's going to be intercepted, and the Trojans will have it back. There will be a penalty on the offense here, but you got to take the ball, even though it's at the one-yard line. Ahmad Ward picks it off. The penalty on a hog tie is going to bring it uh, uh, back. But if you're the Trojans here, you got to decline this, right? With the 133 left, you get the football. Yeah, and I think Apollo Ridge only has two timeouts left, so even if you run a quarterback sneak three times. It's certainly a hold, and uh, you and now Mike Arone, you can see him across the way, says decline the penalty. Yeah, take the ball, get it out of there. And it will be a hold against the Vikings. So Ahmad picks up another interception to go with his uh, two touchdowns. One on the ground if he joined us late, one through the air. And Derry will have the football, but they will be... Well, they're going to actually put it at about the two, looks like. Starting with A&M Machining and Fabrication Incorporated, DKS Pest Control. Might be uh, being generous there, <laughs> just ahead of the one. Yeah, but for the Trojans here, again, you got to keep both hands on that ball. Yeah, don't turn it over here. Neiman has some room if he wants to take a sneak there. Here's Ward off the left side, and not much, but he does get it out of there to about the four, maybe the five-yard line. And see if Paula Ridge uses any of their timeouts left. Looks like Corey McIntosh. We have him with two, right, Coach? Yeah. Gain of five, second and five. Ahmad actually picks up five on that carry. Second and five. G G Restaurant. And now Ahmad will go from the uh, Wildcat formation. And he's uh, actually going to hand it off that time to Barkley. And it's going to set up third and short. Now Apollo Ridge is going to take their time out with 54 seconds to go on the clock. We'll bring it down the home stretch. We'll take a time out with them on the Westmoreland Sports Network. We'll be back after these messages. 
Driving drunk doesn't just affect your own life. It endangers the lives of those riding with you, driving alongside you, walking on the sidewalk, and the friends and families of all of those people. Think before you drink. It isn't easy to say no when a friend offers you drugs. But here's a thought. Next time somebody asks, you want to get high, what they're really saying is, you want to mess up. Drugs can make you mess up in school, in sports, in life. Brought to you by the Westmoreland Drug and Alcohol Commission and the Council on Substance Abuse and Youth. Rapidly moving first half here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. John Flickinger, Bob Lasinski back with you. Trojans lead by seven. They have the football after the uh, interception. And they have a third down and a couple. Yeah, this, this, is, this is huge for the Trojans, you know, with their punting game, John, at the... Uh, um, to be punting out of their own right, end zone. Mount Pleasant leads Freeport 10 to 7 in the second quarter. Bell Vernon now 12 nothing over Thomas Jefferson. Wow. Penn Trafford 7, Hemfield nothing. That was a 7:30 kickoff, so that's still in the first quarter. Here we go with a third down and two. Beeman awaits the snap. And Ward with a spin move. He stays on his feet. There's first down, but a flag down. Second Maude effort again by Ahmad. Picks up the first down, but again, yellow flag on the field. And uh, this looks to be in that area yep. of a hold. Holding. Yep. Of course, the Vikings will take it. That'll be a half the distance All right. the penalty. But the clock stops, and that's the most important thing for Paula Rich. He has five, and he got them in the years of... 48 seconds to go. The Vikings can stop the clock here if the Trojans do not pick up the first down on this third down play. With the penalty, it'll be third down and five where the penalty occurred. Of course, it's from the spot of the foul. Third and five Trojans. And here comes Ahmad, and if he gets the corner, he might pick it up, but he goes down and worm. He kind of slipped down to Ahmad at the eleven. Will it be enough for a first down, though, is the question. It might be. Ward, be close. The Vikings will take a timeout, but the question is, is it a first down or not? I don't think so. They're not uh, indicating that. Let me fourth and an inches. you got to go for it here, though, if you're dairy. I mean, I know it's a big, you know. Uh, well, yeah, they've been able here, to get. This is, this is literal inches. I, yeah, I'm surprised they didn't measure here. I mean, Beeman, you know, he's 6'5", just, uh, you know, have him lean over the line of scrimmage. You think so, or do you punt it away? <laughs> yeah. No timeouts left for Apollo Ridge. Now now we're going the other way here. Yeah, ball's, what, about the... About They're going to the measure. Ball. They are going to measure. And Apollo Ridge did the right thing, although I don't think they, they should be charged the timeout if they were going to measure, police, right? They were given a lost cell phone. If you feel you it's lost close. your cell phone, please see one of the... Kiski Township police officer. It is going to be, uh, uh, wow, yes. a, like a chain link. Sh they have to look down at it just to yeah. see. Put the uh, card in there. Yeah, you just. Just a tad bit short. Yeah, if I'm look, gonna coach around, I got to go with quarterback sneak. Well, coach is out on the field, like literally out on the field right now. I don't know what he's asking. Coach Arone is. Maybe he wanted a better look at see exactly how far it was. Yeah. He wasn't happy about just, something. I mean, he was way past where he's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just a big, you know, big moment of this game here at the end of the the uh, first half. Thirty nine seconds remaining. A big fourth and, and and well, they have one on the scoreboard, of course, yeah. but it's a, it's about an inch. I mean, other than the jet sweep, the Trojans have been, have not been stopped for a loss any time they've gone north and south really in well, this game. So no, if I'm the Trojans, I'm, but they're going to punt. I think they're going to punt. Wow. Are they? Yep. Horwat will punt. Just get the snap here. Beeman's the snapper, by the way. Mason Beeman and Horwat will stand. Just don't, don't punt it directly to the punt returner. You know, there's a lot of open field out there. 39 seconds to go. Great snap. And the kick is a short line drive kick, but it will not be returned. And that's the most important thing. And Mason Horwat, give him credit to the 49-yard line of the Trojans with 29 seconds to go. No timeouts left for Apollo Ridge. And the Trojans will try to hang on here and take the lead into the halftime locker room. We'll have the Trojan marching band for you coming up. I want to say hello to my... 
Good buddy Matt Bassiano, who's watching and listening in. Coach Bass, the Latrobe Wildcats, but a Derry alum, so he has vested interest in the Trojans. Trips to the right, single receiver to the left. You can't let anything get behind you. And that is going to be That's caught by a lineman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't do that. If the flags come out, but yeah, that's gonna that's gonna cost the Vikings. But what are you gonna do? I mean, he's right there to catch it. Why not? <laughs> right. Nineteen seconds left. No timeouts either. So they'll march off the penalty, and then the clock will should roll with nineteen ticks to go. players back in the day so here we go and the official has not put it in play yet but the Vikings come up with trips to the right Schrock rolls to his right and the pass to his brother he makes the uh, catch over there Logan Schrock but that's not going to pick up much there's only five seconds to go they're going to try to get one more play off or spike it. They do spike it, and the clock stops with one second to go. <laughs> My goodness. That's... Hometown? I Maybe. <laughs> I'm just saying I saw two seconds before when he was under center, but they did stop it, and there is one second and one more play to go. Once again, we'll have our Independence Health System halftime report. The Trojan marching band will recap the first half, and Coriana Whiteman will tell you what happened in Trojan land this week around campus. A lot of teams in action. There's a hold. The call it. Schrock's going to take off. He has running room. He got to make the tackle here, though. And he's still on his feet, and he will go down, and that will end the first half of play. From historic Owens Field in Apollo, Pennsylvania, stay with us. Our halftime report is next. Derry leads at 14-7. to seven. The Collision Shop by Jason Mignon is your one-stop shop for all things auto body repair. Our experienced technicians and state-of-the-art facilities have you covered on both passenger and heavy-duty vehicle repairs, including scratches, scrapes, and dents, free estimates, body repairs, welding, refinishing, glass replacement, and more. Our all-new alignment and calibration shop has the tooling, equipment, and staffing to ensure top quality alignment and calibration adjustments for your vehicle. Our friendly office staff is more than happy to assist you through every step of your vehicle's repair process. Visit The Collision Shop by Jason for our complete list of services. Dr. Scott Learn and his dental team have been caring for the community for over 20 years. Dr. Learn offers a wide variety of dental services, including oral exams, gingivitis treatments, crowns, veneers, and more. He even makes custom sports mouth guards. Call 724-537-3314 or visit scottelearndmd.com. Dr. Scott Learn, General and Cosmetic Dentistry in Latrobe, giving you the confidence to enjoy your smile. Independence Health System Westmoreland area believes high quality sports medicine isn't just for the pros. You don't have to be an elite athlete to access an impressive lineup of specialists whose care suits your individual lifestyle. Serving more than 5,000 student athletes in Westmoreland County, you can be assured of getting first string varsity care. They trust us and so can you. The Center for Sports Medicine and Independence Health System, Westmoreland Area. Expert care. Trombone soloist David Karen and alto sax soloist Vincent Mastrocco. The show finale includes the hit songs Let's Groove and Boogie Wonderland. The band is being led onto the field by drum majors Abby Snyder and Katie McChesney. We hope you enjoy the music of Earth, Wind, and Fire.
Director, Mr. Matt Rowley, Assistant Director, Mr. Ryan Rick, Letter Island Instructor, Mr. Kinshaw, Air Director, Instructor, Ken Ho, and Professional Instructor, Karen Karen. Nate Fitness in Latrobe wants to help change your game. And Nate uses a unique training experience utilizing professional creativity that will challenge each and every one of your fitness levels. And Nate Fitness has several affordable programs to fit your budget. Join Nate today and take advantage of their strength, conditioning, weight loss, and flexibility programs. Let them put a plan together for you with a free evaluation. Also be sure to check out Nate's athletic training, baseball, and softball services online at innatefitnesslatrobe.com or stop on in and see our beautiful facility located on Main Drive in Latrobe. Industrial Packaging Supplies in Blairsville specializes in product protection for all shipping needs. IPS is one of the largest manufacturers of industrial shipping reels and converters of interleave paper in the Northeast United States. IPS also supplies a variety of packaging products, including various sizes and quantities of boxes, tape, flow pack peanuts, and corner protectors. Industrial Packaging Supplies, Westinghouse Road in Blairsville. Call 724-459-8299. Stuck in a state of falling behind? Struggling to keep up with your kids, your finances, your insurance, your life? Then let State Farm Agent Sarah Crispin Thomas in Latrobe, Pennsylvania help you simplify. Because with Sarah handling your auto, home, and life insurance, you'll have more time to handle everything else. Because adding State Farm policies can earn discounts that could add up to 40%. Call State Farm Agent Sarah Crispin Thomas today and get to a better state with State Farm. Discounts may vary state to state. And welcome back to the Independence Health System Halftime Show here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Expert care here. Trojans lead it in a very rapidly moving first half. And I guess it moved already because it moved away. We are at halftime and it is a 14-7 uh, Dairy League coach in a first half where, you know, some missed opportunities, I think, for the Trojans and they had a chance to really add to it. But give Apollo Ridge credit. They kept hanging in there and coming back. Yeah, they they've been battling, and uh, you know both both teams had had a few more opportunities, and uh, but the scoreboard you know at this point says the Trojans fourteen and the Vikings seven, but uh, yeah you know they both both moved the ball on the ground, and and of course that's that's what they like to do. The you know the Trojans had you know one opportunity that they that they could have you know completed a long long pass, but. Uh, uh, it didn't, didn't happen, and it, you know, uh, but but anyways, it, it's been a battle back and forth. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you know, a battle that you know when you're on the road, you want to come out. And Coach Mike Arone said this in the pregame interview I did with him that that first drive of the third quarter, whether you're on offense or defense, is always a very important one. Right. Derry will get the ball to start the second half. Right. Yeah. Uh, definitely. And. Uh, there's only one one turnover the first half, and that was by you know by the Vikings. It was in a, uh, a uh, Ward interception. Uh, you know, so it was it was played you know pretty clean. Um, I do recall you know um, uh, Schrock putting the ball on the ground, but they were but the Vikings were able to recover that one. But, but yeah, it was back and forth. Um, uh, do you want to give a recap now? Yeah, or? go ahead. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Then we'll get to Coriana's okay. game break. Yep. Okay. Well. The uh, Trojans got on the board first at the 6:29 mark of the first quarter. It was a 52-yard drive, three minutes and 50 seconds, and it was a Maud Ward from 19 yards out on a fourth down play. Gabe Guess added the extra point, and the Trojans led seven to nothing. But the Vikings came right back, and at 11:55 of the second quarter. They struck to tie of the game. It was a 64-yard drive, six minutes, 30 seconds, and it was freshman quarterback Chris Daly to Carter Schrock from six yards out. Gabe Suman added the extra point, and we were tied at seven all. Then on the ensuing drive, the Trojans came back to take the lead again at the 739 mark of the second quarter. 
It was a 70-yard drive, four minutes and 10 seconds. It was a Mason Beeman four-yard pass to Ahmad Ward. Gabe Guess added the extra point, and that's where we stand at the half, 14-7. to seven. If we take a look at some of the team and, and uh, individual stats, uh, Paula Ridge had 92 yards r rushing the Trojans, 88 Passing uh, Apollo Ridge, 42 yards. The Trojans, 86. Total yards, oh, I'm sorry, 36. Um, so uh, total yards, 134 for, uh, for, for Apollo and, uh, and 124 for the Trojans. Uh, individual uh, Ward is in with 65 yards on 11 carries to lead the Trojans. As far as receiving, Bush has two catches for 22 yards. Ward has two for six yards ago with his four-yard touchdown. Uh, as far as Apollo Ridge, Schrock has 13 carries for 81 yards to lead, lead the Vikings. And receiving... Carter Schrock, his, I'm assuming his brother, has two catches for 17 yards and one touchdown. Apollo Ridge, four penalties, and the Trojans in with one. So there you have it. That's that's the stats according to me. That's it. Stay tuned. Coriana with her game break coming up next here on WSN. Debner's is not only the area's leader in pools and spas, we're that too but we're so much more. Debner's can help you clean up those pesky leaves this fall or the unforgiving snow coming this winter with our full line of leaf and snow blowers. We're a certified dealer of Still, Gravely, Cub Cadet, and Toro premium outdoor power equipment, so you know you're getting the best at Debner's. Debner's Pools, Spas, Lawn and Garden on Route 22 in Blairsville and Shelley Drive in Indiana. Visit Debner's.com. Building Bodies Fitness Center is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, helping the community achieve their fitness goals. Building Bodies features the trademark Top Gun Fitness Program coached by Gary alum Sean Horwell. It incorporates group personal training, youth fitness, and sports-specific training. Or try our renowned group fitness like Zumba, spinning, step, yoga, and more. Building Bodies is also home to Rough House Wrestling, a K-6 wrestling club led by former Trojan State Champ Travis Schaefer. Go Dairy Trojans from Building Bodies Fitness Center. The dental office of Doctors Hansen and Torba is excited to offer our patients same-day crowns with Ceric by Serona. With the integration of Ceric, ceramic crowns can now be accomplished in just one visit and without a temporary. Doctors Hansen and Torba is also proud to offer our patient appreciation program for patients who don't have dental insurance. Just pay the annual enrollment cost and enjoy incredible discounts on everything from cleanings to root canals. Doctors Hansen and Torba, Route 217, Gary Township. Hi, I'm Coriana Whiteman, bringing you this week's Trojan Game Break. Our boys' varsity golf team season ended on Friday with a close loss to Greensburg Salem. The girls were able to bring home their first win on Monday when they faced Southmoreland with a final score of 196 to 218. Allie Chamberlain was the low medalist with a score of 45, followed closely by Cameron Smith with a score of 46. On Wednesday, the girls faced the Scotties again, but this time at home. They were able to finish their season with a win of 208 to 214. Our Dairy Girls Varsity Volleyball team hosted Lake Trib on Monday. The girls played hard but were not able to fend off the Wildcats and lost in three sets. On Tuesday, the girls were back in the gym to face Deer Lakes. They were able to, to defeat the Lancers in three sets. Way to go, girls! Last week, our Varsity Girls tennis team completed the, in the Whippeal Section 1 singles tournament. Paige King and Danielle Dominic faced fierce competition that Wednesday but Danielle was victorious and competed again on Thursday in the finals. Danny played hard and ended up finishing in second place in this double A section one singles tournament. On Monday, the girls hosted Indiana in a section match and fell with a score of four to one. The Dairy Cross Country team 
face Penn Trafford and Norwood at home on Tuesday. The girls claimed victory over Penn Trafford with a score of 29 to 26, but fell to Norwood at 49 to 15. The boys ran hard but couldn't fend off the competition and fell to both opponents. Jane Huss led the girls with her season's best time of 20 minutes and 16 seconds, landing her eighth place overall. Logan Corbett led the boys and set a new personal best of 18 minutes and 18 seconds, securing him in 10th place overall. Our middle school football team traveled to Greensburg Salem on Wednesday. It was a close loss for the Trojans with a final score of 14 to 8. They fought hard. Travis Tukulski caught a touchdown pass thrown by Will McNeil. Anthony Cordetto then receives the pass from McNeil to score the two-point conversion. Defensively, Kulski had a fumble recovery and Rocco DiCario had an interception. The team will take the field again on Wednesday when they face Indiana at Trojan Stadium. For the Westmoreland Sports Network, I'm Coriana Whiteman, and this was your Trojan Game Break! How do you define elite? At Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths in Latrobe, we define elite by offering the highest quality brands for kitchen and bathroom remodeling in Westmoreland County. Brands like Moen, Toto, and Cambria. Meet with one of our incredible designers who will help you choose a stunning cabinet design for your new kitchen or luxurious showers and bathtubs for your new bathroom. Call Elite Plumbing Kitchens and Baths for a free estimate at 724-205-6947 or visit our vast showroom in the Route 30 Plaza in Latrobe. Barclays Dairy King has portions so big you may want to share them with a friend or share them with your brother. Hey, that's my strawberry milkshake! Maybe not. Barclays Dairy King has been serving up the tastiest ice cream to the dairy community for over 40 years. Stop in and try one of our delicious sundaes, our legendary banana split, or our soft serve ice cream in a cone littered with sprinkles. Okay, you can have some. Barclays Dairy King, West 4th Avenue in Derry. Hey Trojan fans, this is Mike Moxenchuk, President of the Dairy Area Education Association. The DAA would like to wish the Trojan football team, cheerleaders, and marching band best of luck this season. We strive to make a difference in our students' lives and prepare them for the challenges and successes that lie ahead. The Dairy Area Education Association. Every student, every day, we make a difference. Hi, I'm Brian Krause. And I'm his wife, Lori. And, and we're, we're the, the owners, owners of Keystone, Keystone Kitchen in New Alexandria. Alexandria. We serve up the most delicious hot homemade food you'll find anywhere, like our fresh handmade burgers, hot sandwiches smothered in gravy, and homemade desserts. And we haven't even mentioned what brings people in from far and near, our incredible made-from-scratch breakfasts. When you come in and see us, we want you to feel like family as soon as you walk through our doors. Everything at Keystone Kitchen is made with love, and we want to pass that on to you. Keystone Kitchen is located on Route 22 in New Alexandria. We, we hope, hope to, to see you soon. soon. Gabe Suman kicks off. The Trojans take the second half kickoff, and they have good field position to the 36-yard line, Coach, and here we go. Yeah, here we go again. You know, it, um, you know, the all important drive here to begin the the second half, and and uh, you know, see if the Trojans do what they were, you know, been doing all first half, and that's been you know running the ball, and um, you know, as long as they you know they they avoid the um, negative plays, I mean, they they've been pretty successful. Great job by both bands at the half, and we have our Hus chiropractic halftime adjustments uh, coming up coach and you already talked about some of them but we'll get to those here in a second we're getting all of our sponsors in that first half flew by we have to catch up on our tremendous sponsors there is a flag down it's going to go against the trojans but it's time now for our hus chiropractic halftime adjustments brought to you by hus chiropractic and little hannah keeping you well adjusted visit hus chiropractic.com what did the trojans have to do again Move the ball, right? Yeah, they got to you know continue you know to move the ball, you know, avoid the negative plays. They got to you know, move the ball on on the ground so they can you know control the clock. And their game is is a running game. Um, as far as the Paula Ridge goes, I mean, I think they they need to continue trying to throw the ball because there were some open receivers and and um, try to run the ball outside. Speaking of run the ball, here's Beeman on the loose right side. Mahaffey brings him down, but Mason Beeman longest run of the season and a first down for the Trojans. There you go. Yeah, 
a nice positive gain there, John, when you're in a hole. Took it out, out to the 49-yard line, 17-yard pickup for, for Mason. Trojans move the chains. They scored on their first possession, converting on two fourth down plays. That was not a fourth down, and here's Ahmad right side and driving the legs and picking up a hard four, maybe five yards before he's brought down. And again, that was uh, Tyler Bartell who had himself a nice first half, number 71, hanging on for dear life. Schrock came in as well to help out on the stop along with Mahaffey. Give him four, second down, six. When I looked at Paul Ridge's uh, roster, John, they got five, five players over 300 pounds. I think there's one freshman and, and, a, and the rest are sophomore juniors. Jet sweep to Damari. A nice stiff arm there on Worm, and then he goes down. Not much of a gain at all, but it could have been a loss. Schrock came over to make the tackle, but uh, Robinson did a nice job just being able to get by Worm on the edge there, and it's going to actually be uh, no gain. It's going to yeah. be third and six. Yeah, like I said, you know, he did a good, good job just to get back to the line of scrimmage. I want to say hello to Superintendent Greg Forensic watching at home with his family. Got the fire going, and Westmoreland Sports Network pulled up on the uh, TV. And all of our uh, viewers this evening, I know we have a lot because I checked, and there's a, another penalty going to go against the Trojans. We have a lot of people online right now watching, and a nice crowd across the way as well making the trip here to Apollo Ridge and Owens Field, and that's going to cost the Trojans five, and now they're behind the chains third and 11. And one good thing too, John, is the wind quit. Thank goodness. It's a little chilly. I'll tell you what, John De Palma up, up top and, and Espo, I, I mentioned this earlier, he did make his way to the game. We don't have him doing anything tonight, so he's sitting here to my right and staying sort of warm with his hot chocolate. Trips to the left to the uh, boundary for the Trojans. Beeman looks like a screen set up. All kind of room, and Barkley, wow. it's incomplete. Boy, Bemo just had to get it out to him, and Barkley had nobody in the vicinity, but he couldn't complete it, and the Trojans have to punt. Yeah, I think the nearest player was probably, you know, 15, 20 yards away from Barkley. Perfect play call. Perfect play call, not executed, though. And that hurts because Barkley has first down and a lot more if he's able to pull that one in. As Mason will snap now. They're looking for another player here, the Trojans. I think they're short one. Yeah. Second punt of the night. That'll get you in trouble on Saturday morning for film. Aiden Piper comes on late. And Horwath's kick this time as a uh, block was made. Looked like a block. In the, another block in the back by... McIntosh and nothing called there by the officials. McIntosh just leveled a Trojan. I think it was Piper right in the back and nothing called and the ball rolls dead. And it will be Apollo Ridge football. But man, they, I think they missed two there, coach. Yeah. Especially the second one. Definitely the second one, yeah. Blatant block in the back. 10.04 left. And the Trojans cannot execute on their first possession. Now Apollo Ridge has it from the 25 and Schrock will line up uh, at the quarterback spot here again it was uh, Christopher Daly and Schrock sharing the duties in the first half Schrock would line up as a running back and Schrock's going to hand off on first down and McIntosh is stacked up Trojans have him drop him he never actually goes down but they had him wrapped up in Piper and company in there Brown Barkley Piper Dzinski they were all in there on the tackle for Derry. Fans, after this play, we about, on about one. The yeah, I can't believe they even gave him a yard there. It's a generous second down and 10. Trips to the right this time to the field. They've been successful. They came into the game only 47 yards through the air, but they've thrown the ball okay here in this one. They got 42. Schrock, Schrock's going to throw it here. And the pocket collapses and the Trojans sack him. First sack of the night. Is that Dzinski in there? No, that's Doherty nine. Max Doherty was the first one to meet him and Dzinski came in late. And a big Carter sack and a huge loss. Nine, Max Doherty. So welcome back Max Doherty, the freshman. Winning ticket. Under winning nine to play here, third ticket. quarter. Zero, four, one. 
9-8-1. Finally four, feels like one. a fall night of nine, football, eight, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Got a little bit crisp in the air. Trips to the right. Look for big number 86, Nathan Fryer here to get involved. He's in the slot to the right. The other Schrock comes across in motion. Is that the Trojans who invaded the neutral zone there? Nope. nope. False start prior to it. That's penalty number five on Apollo Ridge. And they are going backward here to start this first yeah. drive in the uh, third quarter. Yeah, yeah. not the way you want to start your first drive of the uh, second half. Third and, and, and long, deep in your own territory. Alex Worm is a single receiver being covered by Damari on the far side of the field. Here comes Schrock Jr. in motion. And Carter Schrock over the middle, incomplete. Ahmad going up, trying to get his second pick of the night. Cannot do it, and it was intended for Fryer, the big target there, the uh, six-foot, 185-pound sophomore. Incomplete, fourth and 21 coming up for the Vikings. Yeah, nice coverage by, by Ward. Nice ball that, you know, that uh, Schrock threw, but, uh, you know, good coverage by Ward. Trojan should get decent field position out of this. Yeah, both punts by Daly have not been good in this one. Trojans, I think, are maybe a little too deep here for this one. Line drive kick, going to hit short, as I mentioned, and it's going to take a bounce. You saw his first two punts weren't, uh, they were just awful. And that time the two deep men for the Trojans, Ward and Robinson, were standing on the other side of the 50. But it takes a roll and Cochran downs it. The Trojans still have outstanding field position here. they got to take advantage with 8.15 left here in the third quarter, up by seven. Yeah, they, you know, they, they showed they like, moved the ball, but then, you know, Either there's a loss or a penalty, and, and they just haven't been able to, you know, pick it up. Of course, last time they had the opportunity, they, you know, on, on that screen pass, they just couldn't uh, execute it, as you mentioned. And on first down, a hard run by Ahmad. This time, right side, nine yards. Following the uh, blocking on that right side of the offensive line, and that's a good start for the Trojans. Take a look at the scoreboard. Woodland Hills leads Norwin 13-7 at the half. East Allegheny 29-0, shutting out Greensburg-Salem. 439 mark of the second quarter. Penn Trafford leads Hemfield 14-11 midway through the second quarter. Play action faked by BMO this time. He has time. He throws. Sideline route. Tipped and incomplete. Two Trojans in the area. It uh, went through Robinson's uh, hands, a little high on the throw, and then uh, Bush had a shot at it, incomplete. And we got a third down coming up. I like Joe Milan's play call right there on second and short, try to throw the ball, but they couldn't execute again. I'm not sure who that was even in. I think Robinson. For. I think you know. Robinson, coach, on a deep out there. Yeah, but since it was high, I, I don't know whether he was actually, you know, trying to get it to him. Well, it's there. You just got to take advantage. And here's Ahmad, left side, and he's tripped up. And he's going to maybe short. be, yeah, a little bit short Ahmad of that first down. It's going to set up fourth and short. Tripped up by number Penetration 10. that time uh, by uh, 10, Avery Grant, and also 77, Ryan Leiden, a 5'8", 307-pound junior. So Ward comes out on, on fourth and, and short. They're going to go gun here with Papuga on fourth and short. And it's a first down run by Justin Papuga crashing off the left side and picking up the necessary yardage. And hopefully Ahmad's okay to come out on that uh, particular play. But Justin comes in and gets the job done. He came back in. I actually thought that, that uh, uh, Papuga moved a hair early. But uh, you know, Ward is back in the game now. I'm going to say hello to Coach Al Gallardo, who's watching from home and does so religiously each and every week. And longtime high school football coach, former coach of the Trojans, Coach Al. And good friend of uh, Coach Milet and Coach Mole. It's the fake and the keep by Beeman. And again, good running room there and another good play call as Beeman takes off for nine yards. And he will be... About yeah, about a half yard short of a first down. Trojans trying to move the chains again and moving on this drive up by seven. The play, last time they ran out, he picked up 17. You know, so it's been there. Um, you know, and run a play fake and uh, keeping the ball. 
I think it's been more about execution than anything tonight for Derry. Wildcat formation this time with uh, Ward, and he's going to fake and keep. And look at um, McIntosh. Couldn't make the tackle. Neither could Mahaffey. Ward goes out of bounds and gets a first down. That was all Ahmad Ward right there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he, you know, he made made that play there because there was there, there was nothing there. McIntosh was one on one in space with 22, and he couldn't bring him down. And the Trojans move the chains again, and they have the football at the 28-yard line with 6:16. Clock stopped here in the third quarter. This is Barkley, and he dances his way through a hole, and that's not going to work. He only gets a yard. Barkley, it was McIntosh and Spencer Sells, a 5'7", 256-pound senior, teaming up to make the tackle. 5.53 here, turning clock. Trojans on on the march. They got to complete this this drive. They've you know they've showed the ability to move the ball. They just need to finish. Trying to pick up some insurance points here. It's only a touchdown lead right now. Is Beeman under center? Inside handoff. Barkley with running room. He stays on his feet and he dives near a first down inside the 25 to the 22 yard line. A couple of yards short, and the Trojans set up a third and manageable here. Of course, four down territory here. You got two downs. And to get it, but uh, you know, I look for you know Ward just the uh, straight handoff. Yeah, quickly out of the huddle too. I like that. Snapping out of the huddle. Now Bimo is going to look to the sideline. 5:08, clock turning from Owens Field here in Apollo. Trojans lead by seven. Ahmad carries inside, keeps his feet churning, and he's going to pick up the first down. I believe. I believe he got it to the 2019 yard line. Yep. Ward, the runner. And again, a hard Positive couple of yards for Amon. Again, he, he doesn't he go down, down on, on first Derry. contact and most of the time he's falling forward too. Trojans move the chains and the clock keeps on ticking. Horwat and Barkley in the slot this time. And again, it's Ahmad, and he skips his way into a hole, and he cuts inside, and he's still on his feet, and he's going to get about 10 more. And he did a nice job that time, Coach. There was a hole there, but he had to be patient. And he was extremely patient there as he slid off of a block and got outside and got eight yards on that and didn't look like it was going to go for that. No, he's approached he made on the play, second down and two. 100 yards, five away. He's 95 on uh, 17 carries, John. But yeah, I mean, I mean, he just has that that ability to find it that hole. Here's Damari on that jet sweep. He cuts up inside. Nice run by Damari Robinson. Nothing outside. Cut up inside. Get what you can. And what that was was a Trojan first down. It's going to be goal to go. Damari Robinson, the ball player. He did not have Tackle much on the Avery edge. Grant. There's a flag down back there by the official? No. No. Okay, that's not a flag. It will five. be goal to go from the five for the Trojans. Under center this time is Beeman. He's going to fake. He's going to keep. He's going to try to get to the corner of the end zone. He pushes his way to the two. And he's out of bounds over across the way. Mason Beeman on the quarterback keeper. That was Worm Mahaffey doing the work over there for the Boy Vikings. On the spot. Number nine, McIntosh as well. Where are they going to spot it? What do you see through your bino cams, like coach? Four, maybe? Second and goal from the three. three. Trojans trying to add to their lead. Here is Ahmad, left side, gets hit immediately, then he stays on his feet, still on his feet, down to the two. A hard one, maybe two yards for Ahmad, and now it's... No, did they give him a touchdown? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Three-yard run. They gave hard. him the touchdown. It looked like his knee went down. They gave him the touchdown. There you see Coach Aron on the sideline. That fooled me. I mean, we're quite a bit away there but it looked like he was going to be a little bit short but it is a Trojan touchdown 
and they take a 20 to seven lead. Ahmad, three touchdowns tonight, second one on the ground, and Guess will add the extra point, and the Trojans take a 21-7 lead, and you can see Coach Skiba not very happy about that call. He thought Ward was down as well, but he's into the end zone. 3.56 left in the third quarter. The Trojans lead it 21-7. We're back after this on WSN. At M&M Trucking in Latrobe, your shipment is our top priority. M&M Trucking provides a fleet of trucks capable of moving one or many loads of freight, concentrating in steel, lumber, mulch, concrete, precast forms, and more. M&M Trucking hauls loads to both warehouse facilities and direct to construction job sites. Call 724-539-1044 or visit lmmtrucking.com. M&M Trucking, spanning three decades, keeping pace with today's transportation industry. Hi, West Bowen sports fans. This is Al Gallardo, financial advisor with Lincoln Investment and longtime West Bowen County resident. Whether it's a traditional or Roth IRA, 403B or 457 plan, mutual funds, ETFs, stocks, or bonds, I can help you navigate the markets and assist you in achieving all of your goals. Call me at 724-309-8337 or email me at agallardo at lincolninvestment.com and we'll get started together. Advisory services offered or Lincoln Investment, Registered Investment Advisors. Securities offered through Lincoln Investment, Broker Dealer, Member FINRA, SIPC. On the return, Hayden Johns for Apollo Ridge on a good kick by Guess. And he gets to the 28-yard line. Good return for the junior, Hayden Johns. The Jacob Harris on the tackle. You hear Jacob Perfect. Harris? Mentioned on the uh, tackle, Coach Arone said that he works hard in practice every week. He's one of those special teams guys that just likes to get out there, and he makes the tackle there. He made a couple last week as well. And here come the Vikings down by 14. Now it's 21-7. There's a first down Carter run. Pass complete to number nine, Corey Mack Again, their the receivers wide open. First down, Vikings! Corey McIntosh on a reception there. 18-yard pickup. I believe our uh, picture, our picture has gone. Maybe we can reset the uh, camera upstairs. Here's the pass out of the backfield, and it's dropped and incomplete. Incomplete pass. We'll try to get the uh, camera back on here. Intended for David Cochran, second and ten. In the 21-7 game. Three nineteen to go, second down and ten. I know we're still on our audio side of things because I can see that on the board, but we'll try to work on the uh, camera and get that uh, situated. As Schrock is back and he throws out of the backfield and the pass is incomplete at midfield intended for McIntosh on a second and ten. It's now third and ten, Coach. Yeah, again, you know, he was open, and, you know, the Trojans need to do, do a better job covering the receivers. They've been open pretty much all, all night, but, uh, uh, you know, but the pass was just a little bit short there by Schrock. Now we're back. Thanks to Coach Espo heading up with uh, Coach De Palma up there. <laughs> coach De Palma, the uh, head softball coach, Coach Espo, the head basketball coach. we got all the coaches here tonight. <laughs> Glad they like the help. We appreciate it. 21-7, Trojans in the lead. Schrock will take that shotgun snap to the boundary. Pass incomplete. Robinson on the coverage right at the sideline. It is tight here. We talked about the closeness from the fence. It reminds me a lot of off at field, too, in yeah. Greensburg. Right. Worm was the intended receiver. Fourth down. Yeah, just out of this reach there. It would have been a first down. It would have been right at the marker if you would have pulled that in. So a fourth down play coming up. Once again, thanks to Coach Espo and Coach De Palma upstairs. We're back and running again. Third punt of the night for Paula Ridge. I'm gonna make sure he, he does punt it. 
Christopher Daly again and another line drive kick and not, again no return takes a lateral bounce and to the 30 yard line I believe right on it and that's where the uh, Trojans will take over at the 30. 21-7 All right, this is in the third quarter 303 mark this rapidly moving right? game We'll check a couple of other scores. Halftime score, Penn Trafford 14, Hemfield 11 in that rival matchup. North Catholic leads Kiski area 14-0 in the third quarter. Bell Vernon 19, Thomas Jefferson 10. That is at the half. Bell Vernon scored on the last play of the half to uh, add to their lead. It was 12-10. They scored in the last play to lead 19-10, a battle of two undefeateds. And here's Damari. And Damari has running room and he gets into the open field. Damari Robinson down the sideline. One man to beat and he's going to go the distance for the touchdown. 70 yards by Damari Robinson. When he turned that corner, man, he, he turned the Jets on, John, and and uh, nobody could catch him. He, he showed that, that speed. But uh, for the Trojans, jump ahead now, 27 to 7, 250 remaining here in the in the third quarter but the Murray Robinson uh, wow yeah wow and uh, wow that I yeah, there's our camera it's back on now it's <laughs> um, uh, we're gonna change a battery and hope that's the case I know I think we missed that touchdown run but you heard it and Damari did a nice job once he got to the corner to turn on the Jets McIntosh had a shot at him couldn't get there guess kicks the uh, point after it is good and the uh, Trojans now lead 28 to seven on that long Damari touchdown run. And they are breaking it open very much like Ligonier did a week ago. Stay with us. We're back on the Westmoreland Sports Network after this. The McCabe Funeral Home has been thoughtfully assisting the dairy community in their time of need for over 45 years. The McCabe Funeral Home offers various funeral services including traditional and non-traditional arrangements and pre-arrangements. They also offer a military funeral honor ceremony, which consists of the folding and presentation of the United States flag to the veteran's family and the playing of taps. Please visit McCabeFuneralHomes.com. The McCabe Funeral Home, West 3rd Avenue in Derry. Having a get-together for the big game this weekend? Come round to Roundhouse Pizza in Derry. Every Friday and Saturday at Roundhouse, a large one-topping pizza is just $10. In need of something bigger? No problem. Order the Roundhouse. 48 slices of pizza that's a true crowd pleaser. Roundhouse Pizza also has wings, breadsticks, hoagies, and salads galore. Call 724-694-0665. Come round to Roundhouse, East First Avenue, downtown Derry. Alex Worm on the return. He's up over the 30 to the 32, and Justin Papuga makes the stop for the Trojans, who now lead 28 to 7. And again, we're going to continue to uh, bring you this one in audio until we get the uh, camera situation fixed as Schrock throws out of the backfield. And again, McIntosh is there. He had a nice gain, but the pass was wide of the mark. And it's going to be second down, and this is what Apollo Ridge does not do well, throw the football. And we've seen it here in the second half. They've missed opportunities. Yeah, four straight incompletions for Schrock. But, and again, the, the receivers are open. They just haven't been, been completing the uh, throws. 2.40 left. Third quarter. Man in motion is Cochran. Schrock, time to throw. This time he hits his receiver wide open is Jaden McCray. And McCray into the secondary. And he is going to be overtaken and brought down by Horwat, but not before he picks up a big gain to the Trojan 40-yard line. Nobody around Jaden McCray. And that was a well-designed play for the Vikings. Yeah, you know, most definitely. And like I said, I mean, they're – you know, the receivers have been open pretty much all night, and it's just a matter of uh, execution on, on, on Apollo Ridge's part that, uh, you know, they just need, need to complete them. That was McCray's first catch of the night. 
Here comes Schrock to the right, and he's taken down. Trojans there. They smell that one out. Brady Brown filling that nicely along with Ahmad. And uh, that will be no gain. And uh, that was Logan Schrock. I think we're going to be okay with the camera now. No loss, no gain. <laughs> They just needed to plug it in up there, I think. Right? Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think we missed the Damari touchdown run, but I know we try every week to bring you video action of the Trojans. And tonight, they have a 28-7 lead. Fake the McIntosh. He's in trouble. Dudzinski gets away. And there he goes. Schrock. Spinning and staying on his feet. Extra effort. And he's knocked out of bounds by Max Doherty, but not before. Carter Schrock picks up a first down and a great hustle and extra effort by number eight for the Vikings. For another Viking first down. Yeah, Vikings trying to answer the last Trojan touchdown there. Nice nice run by uh, you know by Schrock. <laughs> Oh my, I'm getting all kind of text messages about this camera. <laughs> One I got said, Dan better pay his bill. <laughs> oh my, maybe charge the batteries better next time. Here's the pass, it's almost intercepted, but knocked away Robinson with a big stick on McIntosh, and he stays down. That was almost picked, and then McIntosh had his hands on it, and Robinson delivers a big blow. McIntosh stays down, so... We are going to uh, step out here on the Westmoreland Sports Network, and when we come back, uh, we'll continue here at 58 seconds to go in the third quarter. Trojans lead at 28-7. to seven. Barclays Dairy King has portions so big you may want to share them with a friend or share them with your brother. Hey, that's my strawberry milkshake. Maybe not. Barclays Dairy King has been serving up the tastiest ice cream to the dairy community for over 40 years. Stop in and try one of our delicious sundaes, our legendary banana split, or our soft serve ice cream in a cone littered with sprinkles. Okay, you can have some. Barclays Dairy King, West 4th Avenue in Derry. Nice to see McIntosh walking off under his own power coach. Yeah, it is. and You know, you don't want to see anybody get, get hurt and... You know, um, you know he, you know he made the catch, but the but the hit jarred, jarred the ball loose, and so the uh, uh, Vikings have second and ten, with 58 seconds here remaining in the third quarter. Schrock will take the snap. Looked like Cochran turned up too early. Nothing called. The pass is intercepted. And the Trojans down the sideline. And it's Vince Dudzinski who almost got the last one. This one he did get. And the Trojans have it back. Vince Dudzinski on the pick. And it kind of went to the well. Fourth quarter action here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Beeman takes the snap on third down. Throws over the middle and behind his intended receiver. And that was Sacco. Who was in the middle of the field, and now it's third down and nine coming up. Uh, uh, fourth down now. Or fourth down, I yeah. should say. Yeah, I'm sorry. I missed that down. We uh, should be back on track now. Trojans go three and out. I think, I think if I recall, it'll be the first time maybe all night they, they went three and out. Horwat will punt. He stands at his own 30. And an end-over-end end kick, and it takes a Trojan roll, and oh, it's going to be picked up by Worm. And he's going to go down at the 35-yard line. There's a flag also, about the 42-yard line. So I think we're back uh, with audio and video looking the same anyway, at least from my vantage point. The Trojans lead it 28-7. We are in the fourth quarter. Scoreboard stays the same here, except for changing of the quarter. We're going to give away our second car wash, by the way, coming up here soon. Once we get all these technical issues taken care of, see? Yeah, I'm you a never man know of what many can happen. Yeah. Up here. 
got a lot of different uh, things to set <laughs> set up. Oh my! Sometimes we have all the bells and whistles. Sometimes we have uh, not as many. But the bottom line is, we have Trojan football and a 28-7 lead. And the snap. Rolling to his left is Schrock, throwing off his back foot to Worm, incomplete. He had a step on uh, the defender down there, but it's incomplete. Intended for Worm. Yeah, and that was uh, Doprak. Second down and 10, throwing on first down this time, and really having to come from behind here. That's the 17th pass attempt tonight for the... The, the Vikings is not known as, as a passing team, but uh, right now down 21 points. That, that's probably what they're going to have to do. Second and 10. Football at the 22-yard line. Breaking down, breaking down, and the Trojans bring him down. Barkley on the sack that time. Schrock was trying to get out of there, and Barkley brings him down for the sack. That's one way to, uh, you know, to stop the passing game. With a loss of eight. Third and 18 coming up for the Vikings. The Trojans have come out here in the second half, and... Played well on both sides of the football. If you watched the Steeler game on Monday night, you saw TJ Watt setting the Steelers team sack record. We'll get to some scores here in a moment. I'm going to say hello to uh, Tony Flack. He's listening back home and continues to be a supporter of the Westmoreland Sports Network and Trojan football. Justin going to be playing tomorrow again at Waynesburg. Here's a catch. Oh, by nice. Schrock. Yeah, nice Schrock play by Brown. Schrock. And Brown, yeah. yep, you're right, Coach. You know, Coach Arone said in his interview that uh, when Coach Hissom recorded the tackles on uh, on film, as they still call it, right? Video. <laughs> after, the, after the game, he said, uh, man, he just kept hitting the tally button <laughs> for Brady Brown. He had a really nice game. And they're playing all kind of trivia here at the stadium. Number three. I think that's like the fourth trivia question. There's a timeout going to be called and a half, so. by the Trojans. And all right, stay with us. Video back in action here. Trojans lead by 21 on the Westmoreland Got Sports Network, and we're back after this. Collision Shop by Jason Mignon is your one-stop shop for all things auto body repair. Our experienced technicians and state-of-the-art facilities have you covered on both passenger and heavy-duty vehicle repairs, including scratches, scrapes, and dents, free estimates, body repairs, welding, refinishing, glass replacement, and more. Our all-new alignment and calibration shop has the tooling, equipment, and staffing to ensure top quality alignment and calibration adjustments for your vehicle. Our friendly office staff is more than happy to assist you through every step of your vehicle's repair process. Visit the Collision Shop by Jason com for our complete list of services. Dr. Scott Learn and his dental team have been caring for the community for over 20 years. Dr. Learn offers a wide variety of dental services, including oral exams, gingivitis treatments, crowns, veneers, and more. He even makes custom sports mouth guards. Call 724-537-3314 or visit scottelearndmd.com. Dr. Scott Learn, General and Cosmetic Dentistry in Latrobe, giving you the confidence to enjoy your smile. Best punt of the night by Daly, and again, the Trojans let it roll. They got to practice that, Coach. There's been too many uh, punts, and it's going to hurt you in future games, that you got to come up and field. I understand the danger of it all, but that punt there needs to be fielded around midfield. Instead, it bounces 10 more yards in the Trojan direction. And uh, maybe that's the coach in me, and maybe some people were saying, shut up, Flickinger. <laughs> I don't know, but you got to field the punt when you have a chance, and that was fieldable. Especially on on uh, turf. If you're playing on turf, you're going to get a much bigger roll yeah. on that too. But yeah, I I know we've we've talked about that before, and uh, you know that you know that cost field position. Twenty-eight-seven. We'll get to some other scores here in a moment. Trojans in the lead. Sacco comes in motion, and it's going to be Sacco on the jet sweep, and he's swarmed under. 
he's going to lose a couple. Trying to get the freshman involved in the uh, action there. Anthony Sacco, outstanding athlete. Just 5'6", 130 pounds, but you'll see him continue to get better, bigger, and stronger as the years progress. He is a good kid. Under nine minutes to play here in the football game. Want to thank John De Palma for the camera work tonight. Doing a great job for his first time, and Coach Espo helping us out here with a couple of technical difficulties. And here's a run off the uh, left side, and being stacked up is Ahmad. Or is that Papuga? That's Let me see, Ahmaud. Papuga, 10. Yeah. Yep. Justin Papuga on the run. Good idea, I think, for That's Coach Arone to get him out of the game too, right? You know? Yeah. You're, yeah. you're up by 21. Apollo Ridge has not shown that they could really drive the football on the Trojans other than that one possession. Give me a third down and seven. I don't think it's an injury type of thing because he was out there on defense. So here we go with a third and seven. Wing right, two receivers to the right, single receiver to the left for the Trojans. Beeman steps into this throw, and it's intercepted, intended for Bush, and it is picked off by Jaden McCray, the sophomore at 6'2", 170 pounds. Bemo needed to get a little bit more air under that, a little higher. He had his man open. open. yeah. Yep. He had him open, but give McCray credit to climb the ladder and pick it off. And now to the 40-yard line, and Ahmad comes back out on defense. Apollo Ridge has it back, and they have life with 7.52 left here in the football game. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that they, you know, they threw there. I mean, they're up, up 21 points and just, just run clock. Yeah, I think also, I know it's a conference game. You're up by 21, try to work on your game too. I mean, they got to try to work on it. And Schrock's going to step up and run this time. And he does find himself a little bit of room, but he stays on his feet. Now he steps out of bounds. And Doherty over there again, Brown and Dzinski and... I think that's uh, 12 Ricky Daniels on the defensive end coming over as well. That's your truck did a lot of running for a couple of yards, but uh, give, give him credit. Yeah, give Max Doprak, the corner, some credit too for really using the sideline as his friend there and helping out on the stop. 7.43 left here in the football game. Kind of slowed down a little bit now. Second down to go out of the backfield. This pass is on the money to McIntosh, and he makes a move. Damari brings him down, but uh, he's going to fall for a first down. And move the chains again for the Vikings, who are putting together a nice drive here after the interception. Trying to get back into this football game, down 21. First down! By the way, Jeanette leads Charleroi 28-7 after three quarters. The Jayhawks trying to pick up their fourth win. That game also being broadcast on the Westmoreland Sports Network via video. Latrobe 23-0 leading Laurel Highlands in the fourth quarter. Schrock all day to throw and he goes over the middle and it's going to be caught and it's going to be Damari again on the tackle but not before McCray gets down inside the 15-yard line. Again, you know, these receivers all night, John, have been just out open. I mean, they're, you know, they're catching it underneath and then uh, picking up a lot of yards after the catch. Yep, moving the football and giving Schrock a lot of time. Schrock over 100 yards now passing. This time, two receivers to the boundary. Look at McIntosh on the right wing, and now they're going to reposition Cochran, who should have been called there for a legal motion, but instead it's going to be caught by McIntosh, and that's an easy call to make, and they didn't make it there. Cochran turning up way too early, and the pass is going to be complete for some yardage on that far side of the field. Pick up about eight. Yeah, second down and two, so a lot of motion there, but... You know, Cochran that time was about a step and a half early turning up the field. <laughs> Coach Derek Molnar across the way, I think, trying to say that to the official, and now he's pushing him back and saying, get back on your sideline. Coach Mole running the defense. 
and doing an outstanding job tonight. But here's Schrock left side, and Schrock is going to get into the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Vikings, and they are back in this football game, Coach. It's 28-13. And they made it look easy again, you know, just just hitting the receivers, hitting the uh, open guy. Now last drive, you know, he he had receivers open, and and uh, you know he wasn't uh, putting the ball on the money, but on this drive here. He did a great job. The interception turns into points. Give credit to Jaden McRae, who's made some plays, not only the interceptor, but also what he's done offensively in this drive. Kick by Suman is good. 28-14, stay with us. Not done yet. 5.58 left in the fourth quarter. Back after this. Nate Fitness in Latrobe wants to help change your game. And Nate uses a unique training experience utilizing professional creativity that will challenge each and every one of your fitness levels. And Nate Fitness has several affordable programs to fit your budget. Join in Nate today and take advantage of their strength, conditioning, weight loss, and flexibility programs. Let them put a plan together for you with a free evaluation. Also be sure to check out Nate's athletic training, baseball, and softball services online at innatefitnesslatrobe.com or stop on in and see our beautiful facility located on Main Drive in Latrobe. Industrial Packaging Supplies in Blairsville specializes in product protection for all shipping needs. IPS is one of the largest manufacturers of industrial shipping reels and converters of interleaved paper in the Northeast United States. IPS also supplies a variety of packaging products, including various sizes and quantities of boxes, tape, flow pack peanuts, and corner protectors. Industrial Packaging Supplies, Westinghouse Road in Blairsville. Call 724-459-8299. Onside kick by Suman. Daniels had a shot at it, couldn't get it, but Beeman on the spot. Mason Beeman with the hands team comes up with it, uh, Coach, as they go onside and almost execute, but the Trojans are there. Yeah, that would have been huge for the Vikings if they would have been able to come up with that. That ball, like you said, there's still, you know, time, 5.56 left, and, and the way they moved the ball on a last drive through the air, um, you know, they, they have that opportunity. Ward is back in the backfield. And the freshman Brady Brown is at the fullback spot. Offset backfield. And a toss to Ahmad. And Ahmad breaks through. And he's down the sideline for a first down. And that shows the strength of Ahmad Ward because he was almost stopped by Mahaffey. And a flag is back at midfield. This might be coming back. He ran right through Mahaffey's tackle. But it's a holding call against Derry. Wow. Ouch. Yeah, ouch, ouch is it there. I mean, I would have... That would have been a good, good opportunity to put six on a board. <laughs> Sorry, Coach, I interrupted you there. They're going to mark the spot a couple of yards past the uh, the first down stick, so it would probably be an eight-yard penalty in all. It would be first and 18 for the Trojans. And the clock is stopped now. As once again, BMO will go under center. Ladder motion by Damari. Inside handoff goes to Brown. And he fights for maybe a yard. That is all. And 77, Ryan Lydon had him by the ankles. It's going to bring Number up one, third. Three, and be second, and right, home. Coach? Second. Or, yeah, yeah With second the down. I'm sorry. Lydon. That's right. Clock is moving. Trojans up by 14, so no hurry. But give Apollo Ridge credit. They're staying in this football game. As Beeman awaits the snap, and he'll give to Ahmad, and Ahmad tries to find some running room, and nothing there. Gang tackling. They had nine Vikings up there making a tackle. Avery Grant, number 10. Schrock and company. Third and 18, no gain on that play. And if you're the Trojans here, do you just run the ball and run more time off the clock? That's I mean, what, That's what I would do. You know, you're in a situation, and I know you had mentioned it, why are they passing before? I can understand kind of like wanting to work on that a little bit, but now you're starting, it's starting to get the momentum swinging here. Yeah. Third and and Paul Ridge, I believe, still has all three timeouts left. It's, it's half. 428, clock turning. We'll have our Marisur postgame show. Latrobe now leads Laurel Highlands 37 nothing, and... Don't worry, our car wash giveaway is coming up, I promise. 
Looked like the Trojans left early that time. Beeman loads up. He goes for Damari, who has a step on the defender, but underthrown and intercepted. That's as good as a punt right there for the Trojans, actually. Picked off by Mahaffey. Yes, Mahaffey. That time Beeman underthrew Robinson, but really, if you think about it, that Rose was as good as a punt, Mikey. if not better. Yeah. So they have it at the 25. That was a third down play with 4.09 left here in the fourth quarter. Let's give away our second car wash, Tidal Waves. Four different car washes, Thunderstorm $9, Cyclone 11 Hurricane 13 You get the Tsunami Wash if you're the first emailer at flick2312 at gmail.com, F-L-I-C-K-2312 at gmail.com. Across from Derry High School, right next to the pit stop, thanks to Rob Rockwell and company uh, for their continued sponsorship here of WSN. And Schrock is trying to lead his team to a big comeback here. And the pass is caught by McIntosh. Brown misses him. McIntosh stays on his feet. First down and more. He gets to the 38-yard line, and the clock will stop to set the sticks here. And Trojans rush three, dropped eight, but, uh, you know, just can't. Right now, Trojans are having trouble stopping up the passing game. And one thing that I learned from the South Moreland game that I just watched the referee do, those sticks do not have to be set anymore at all. I mean, he rolled that clock literally three seconds after they picked up that first down and stopped the clock. Coach Aron was going to look into that, too. He wasn't so sure of that. And again, Cochran turns up early and nothing called. They're letting him get away with it. Schrock, and now a flag comes yeah. in, and his pass is going to be caught, but I don't think they heard me up there. This has got to be something different. I believe there was a hold over yeah. here on the, the end. Number five, Cochran, two, three, maybe four times going in motion, has turned up prior to the snap, and they're letting him get away with it, but... This is coming back. Pass was caught by Jaden McCray. And this will hurt pretty badly for Apollo Ridge with time not on their side here. Uh, 325 remaining and moving back 10 yards, moving the ball back to the 24-yard line. The Trojans had an outstanding third quarter. Not so good here in the fourth. But they do have the lead, and they are trying to go 2-0 and in the Allegheny Conference. This will be the... First time since the Tim Sweeney era that the Trojans started 2-0 in conference play. If they can hold on here tonight as Schrock wanted to go down the middle. He has running room if he wants it. He's directing traffic and his throw is low and incomplete. As it was intended across the way for McIntosh. And again, you know, the Trojans are brushing three, so Schrock should have a lot of a lot of time, but uh, came up short on that attempt. We'll have our Mariser post-game show coming up. Let's see some other scores here. Franklin Regional, 48-7 over Shaler. Shaler came into that uh, they contest. They were undefeated, weren't they? Undefeated, yeah. The Panthers looking good. And again, <laughs> Schrock is back, and he gets hit hard as he throws this one downfield and incomplete. Double coverage down there, Doprak. And uh, Schrock's pass is incomplete. Intended receiver was Schrock Jaden got McCray. hit and now hit hard ball. as McCray was the intended receiver. Horwat and uh, Doprak on the coverage. Third and 25 coming up. Yeah, third and a mile. Huh? Trojans need to keep the ball in in front of them. Next week, Apollo Ridge will welcome Still Valley here to Owens Field. The Trojans will be back at home for homecoming as they take on Sarah Catholic. And Schrock back there. Piper gets knocked away by McIntosh there. And the pass is going to be caught, but a short gain and a short tackle by Brady Brown. And uh, Piper, welcome to uh, high school football there as uh, McIntosh kind of Got him that time. But Aiden Piper has played a strong game tonight. Brown makes the tackle. It's going to be fourth down and forever. And you know the story surrounding Sarah Catholic, such an unfortunate incident that happened earlier this week. Yeah, it's a shame. They, they uh, you know, they, they, they had uh, no, uh, uh, what, like no outside activities or yeah no uh, game because it canceled there was an accident Tuesday. involving a Sarah Catholic school van and a 15 year old young lady was killed 
and that was just just sad and yeah she was a cheerleader for the eagles pass over the middle behind the intended receiver and that was for logan bianco and the trojans are going to take over as they come up big defensively so nothing for Sarah Catholic, you're right, tonight. They did not play the game, so I don't know how they're going to handle that situation, but they did the right thing, obviously, in not playing after that tragedy. There were two, I think the van driver as well, Coach, was in critical condition and, and passed away from what I was told. Yeah, that's just a shame. No young life. Also next week is our Alumni and Friends Day. On Saturday, the Hall of Fame will be the inaugural Trojan Hall of Fame. I mentioned it earlier, will be announced the first class. Brett Miller will join me next week at halftime to talk about each one of the candidates going into the Hall of Fame next Saturday as Papuga carries on first down for a short game. That was from Ward who took the snap. And a timeout going to be called by Apollo Ridge. We'll keep it here. Uh, but um, just to you know, tell you a little bit more, about the uh, Hall of Fame Justin, next right. weekend. We will have the uh, Alumni Family and Friends event. It will all start at the Spirit of the Trojan pep rally next Thursday. And that uh, pep rally will be at the high school. And then we'll have a meet and greet on September the 29th before the game. Alumni and friends, there will be uh, refreshments in the high school uh, lobby up by the uh, gym area. And then the homecoming parade will take place at 6 p.m. That's homecoming next week as well. The game at 7.30 and then the alumni and friends golf outing at 8.30 in the morning on Saturday. The alumni band concert, you don't want to miss that. That's uh, going to be held at 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, followed by the Hall of Fame induction ceremony at 5 o'clock, and then a blue and gold alumni and friends celebration at 7 at Jaffrey's Stone Bar and Kitchen, Main Street in Latrobe. So a lot going on next week in our first class, our inaugural class, and I cannot wait to be able to announce some of the great names that are going into that first class. Because yeah, you were part of the committee, right? Yeah, yeah. They call me the chairperson, but Brett Miller <laughs> Brett Miller does all the work. Here's Ahmad with a flag down. Ahmad goes for a touchdown, but it's coming back. A good run by Ahmad, but it's coming back. The flag is back at the 33-yard line. Well, last two runs by Ahmad that, uh, you know, he picked up substantial yardage is coming back. And it will be a hold again. And, you know, Perry. Coach Arone was so disappointed, and Ahmad's still standing in the end zone down there. Is he hurt? Yeah, the training staff's coming. I don't know if what's going on. He's upright, but he's standing with the officials down there in the end zone. He has a cramp maybe or something. Yeah, it's what, they're, yep. it's what it looks like. Tyler Bradley is the uh, normal trainer for the Trojans, but... His wife is about ready to give birth, so he's not here tonight. Can't blame him. Yeah, so he has a replacement in there, and congratulations to him, by the way. I mean, uh, he and his uh, beautiful wife expecting, and they're going to check on Ahmad. I'm not sure what the, what the issue is down there. You see the camera on him right now, but we're going to step out, and uh, we're going to be back, get our sponsors in here on the Westmoreland Sports Network right after this. Stuck in a state of falling behind? Struggling to keep up with your kids, your finances, your insurance, your life? Then let State Farm agent Sarah Crispin Thomas in Latrobe, Pennsylvania help you simplify. Because with Sarah handling your auto, home, and life insurance, you'll have more time to handle everything else. Because adding State Farm policies can earn discounts that could add up to 40%. Call State Farm agent Sarah Crispin Thomas today and get to a better state with State Farm. Discounts may vary state to state. Coach, good to see Ahmad walking off under his own power. I don't know if that was a cramp or what the situation was. Yeah, it doesn't even look like he, you know, he has a lump or anything right now. So, you know, possibly a cramp. Maybe the ball back to the 38. We got a minute and 58 here remaining in the game. Want to congratulate Jennifer Morrow. That'll be Jennifer Jen Datsko Morrow. Remember Jen, the winner of the Tidal Waves Car Wash. 
We had several emailers tonight, so please keep doing it each and every week. We'll try to give one away. And here's Damari, and he runs into a tackler, and he stays on his feet. Damari Robinson's going to go. Touchdown, Trojans. Never left his feet. Kept on churning. And Damari goes for six, and the Trojans add to their lead. 38 yards for Amari. That puts him over 100 yards rushing with that uh, long touchdown run he had earlier. But, Amari yeah, he, he just wasn't going to be denied, John. He broke out a tackle. And, uh, again, you know, once he gets in the open, not too many people are going to catch him. And you got to tackle him. I mean, you know, that was arm tackling there. And you're not going to bring him down. And then he shows the speed, certainly, as Guess has been perfect on the night. And he will try for his fifth point after. Low kick, does get over the crossbar. It is good. Trojans, 35. Vikings, 14. And we're back with a kickoff on the Westmoreland Sports Network right after you hear this. Independent Health System Westmoreland area believes high quality sports medicine isn't just for the pros. You don't have to be an elite athlete to access an impressive lineup of specialists whose care suits your individual lifestyle. Serving more than 5,000 student athletes in Westmoreland County, you can be assured of getting first string varsity care. They trust us, and so can you. The Center for Sports Medicine and Independence Health System Westmoreland area. Expert care, here. Trojans lead 35-14 on the touchdown run by Damari Robinson. His second of the night. Could have had another one on a, on a pass reception as well. Yeah. Just missed that one. Yeah, just right off his fingertips. And guess his kick. I don't know. He missed kick that. That was interesting. And it's just going to stop. It never made it the necessary distance, Coach. I think he just took his eye off that. So Apollo Rich will get the ball right there at the 44 if they want it. That's where they're going to take it. Yeah, I, I had my head down. I had Actually, my head down I, a little bit too. I, I didn't see it. <laughs> I, was, I was reading. I... I have to laugh. Trainer Karen, Karen Andresik, she's, she's, she's been, she was at Dairy for the longest time. And TK will always text me when my kids' birthdays are and things. She remembers everything. It's so nice to hear from TK. She's watching in tonight. She's letting me know that Tyler Bradley's baby has arrived and they are all doing well. So congratulations to the Bradleys. I know I talked to him yesterday at the school. It might have been Wednesday, and he said it could be any time now, and here we go. So congratulations to them, and hello to TK. And loading up, throwing, touchdown, Schrock! Right on the money to Alex Worm. That was a sensational throw by Schrock. And the Trojans were beaten. You can't be taken by surprise on that play, can you? No, you got to expect it, you know, but... I know hey, they had nice. some, some younger guys in, in the game there. They had some younger guys in the game, and he was burnt on the play. He got beaten on the play. And yes. uh, it's 35-20 just like that. But how about Schrock? What a great ball he threw there. Nice yeah, tight 43 spiral. yards in, in the air. That'll give the Vikings some confidence. Suman adds the extra point. Only seven seconds went off the clock from the last time you saw that picture. And now the Vikings score. We'll be back in 30 on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Debner's is not only the area's leader in pools and spas, we're that too, but we're so much more. Debner's can help you clean up those pesky leaves this fall or the unforgiving snow coming this winter with our full line of leaf and snow blowers. We're a certified dealer of Still, Bravely, Cub Cadet, and Toro premium outdoor power equipment, so you know you're getting the best at Debner's. Debner's Pools, Spas, Lawn and Garden on Route 22 in Blairsville and Shelley Drive in Indiana. Visit Debner's.com. 147 left. The Vikings with a long bomb. And a touchdown pass. And an onside kick. And it's up there. And it's bouncing around. And I think, I don't know. We'll see. They're going to unpile. The Trojans really didn't attack that ball. And I think Derry does come up with it. Is it Beeman again? Yep. Yep. Big Mason Beeman comes up with it. And 
147 left. A 14 point lead for the Trojans. And again, congratulations to Tyler Bradley. And his wife and his family. We'll see here if Derry can run out the, the clock. Uh, you know, Paula Ridge, I believe, has all three timeouts remaining. Papuga will take it for the Trojans. Try to run this one out. Do you think Papuga needs to run a little bit lower, John? He seems like he runs almost straight up. Yeah, and I think Coach Aron talked about that, and he said he's getting better. And he is a horse and a great kid. He's learning to become a running back, for sure. I'm going to say hello to Ron Polinski, former outstanding coach here at Derry. Watching in, making a comment about Coach Ox, Coach Milant, saying he's called a great game tonight, and I agree with him 100%. As Papuga is going to swim his way for maybe a yard. Good game plan coming in. Uh, you know, it comes down to execution, too. You can have the best game plan out there. I think the Trojans failed to execute early in the game. They picked it up, certainly, from the end of that first quarter through the second. They came out strong in the third, struggled a little bit in the fourth, but got it back. And, you know, all in all, they have some work to do, certainly, Coach. But they're going to go 2-0 in the conference. That's sensational. Yeah, I mean, that's the main main thing. But, yeah, they they do have a lot of work to do. They need to work on the secondary, definitely, because there were yep. receivers running open all night for Paula Ridge. Yep, good point. And the, Paula Ridge not trying to stop the clock here. Again, right side is uh, Papuga fighting on third down. And 12 seconds to go. They're just going to, I think, let this one tick down. So the Derry Area Trojans are now 3-2 and two overall, but most importantly, 2-0 and oh in the Allegheny Conference with a 35-21 win tonight over the Apollo Ridge Vikings on the road. Stay with us. Our Amerisur Financial Post Game Show is next here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. Building Bodies Fitness Center is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, helping the community achieve their fitness goals. Building Bodies features the trademark Top Gun Fitness Program coached by Derry alum Sean Horwell. It incorporates group personal training, youth fitness, and sports-specific training. Or try our renowned group fitness like Zumba, spinning, step, yoga, and more. Building Bodies is also home to Rough House Wrestling, a K-6 wrestling club led by former Trojan State Champ Travis Schaefer. Go Dairy Trojans from Building Bodies Fitness Center. The Matthew Merlin Funeral Home in Dairy provides individualized funeral services designed to meet the needs of each and every family that comes through our doors. From casket choices to funeral flowers, our staff of dedicated professionals will help you through all of the planning of the funeral service. Please call us at 724-694-8331. The Matthew Merlin Funeral Home on North Chestnut Street in Dairy. A celebration of a life well lived. Welcome to the Cooperstown Event Center in Latrobe. The Cooperstown Event Center has seating for up to 300 guests, making it a perfect fit for wedding receptions, team banquets, parties, and wedding and baby showers. To book your special event, call 724-539-3383 or visit cooperstowneventcenter.com. The Cooperstown Event Center, Thomas Street in Latrobe. For all of your life events, go Trojans from the Coop. State Representative Mike Reese was a great advocate for the kids in our community. He felt athletics were a vital tool in raising healthy, happy kids. The Mike Reese Memorial Fund offers grants to local youth athletic organizations so that every kid has a chance to play. Funding is available for new equipment, registration fee offset, facility improvements, and more. Visit MikeReeseMemorialFund.com to apply. Hi, Westmoreland Sports fans. This is Al Gallardo, financial advisor with Lincoln Investment and longtime Westmoreland County resident. 
Whether it's a traditional or Roth IRA, 403B or 457 plan, mutual funds, ETFs, stocks, or bonds, I can help you navigate the markets and assist you in achieving all of your goals. Call me at 724-309-8337 or email me at agallardo at lincolninvestment.com and we'll get started together. Advisory services offered through Capital Analysts or Lincoln Investment Registered Investment Advisors. Securities offered through Lincoln Investment Broker Dealer Member FINRA SIPC. And we welcome you to tonight's post-game show presented by Amerisurf Financial on South Chestnut Street in Derry. Get started with the new Amerisurf Student Life Checking Account. The Trojans win it tonight, 35-21. They are now 2-0 in conference play, 3-2 overall. Congratulations to Coach Mike Arone, his staff, and team on a victory tonight and a well-deserved one as uh, they were certainly the better team tonight. Uh, albeit still a lot of work to do for the Trojans. But, man, when you get off to that 2-0 and start, Coach, I mean, you can't ask for any more than that. No, no, you can And, uh, you know, it, it's just going to be huge down the road, you know, when, um, you know, now they got that two-game lead on Apollo Ridge. And, and I mean, there's still plenty of football to go yet. But, uh, you know, but to start 2-0 and and, and uh, you know, to get that confidence going, you know, and, 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 and I mean, you're going to have a tough game here in her coming up at home next Friday but uh, you know gets the confidence going I mean it makes you upbeat in, in practice and so forth but I mean you know there's still a lot lot to work on and uh, but uh, you know good effort over all tonight and and they were able to come up up with a victory yeah absolutely and uh, it was uh, done in uh, big play fashion of course uh, the Trojans had a touchdown uh, call back couple of big plays called back in this game but uh, they were able to to win it uh, I also again want to congratulate um, uh, Tyler Bradley um, on the uh, birth of his son and that son is Archer Edward Bradley I got the name I wanted to make sure I got that uh, Archer born and it's just uh, it's crazy because when Ahmad was over there I, I hadn't seen anybody getting worked on tonight so I didn't realize Tyler wasn't here at the game because as of uh, like I said yesterday when I talked to him he said it could be any day now uh, but that day was today and uh, he was uh, obviously uh, after the birth tuned in here to see you know his Trojan team uh, pulling out a victory as well on his son's birthday now so again congratulations to him and again, I want to thank John De Palma for just an outstanding job upstairs, high above the stadium here, uh, doing the, the uh, camera tonight uh, on a great, really a great setup here in this booth. Yeah, um, it was you know, nice to have our own room. Our own room. Yeah. We love to have our own room. Nice and tasty. Brett, are you listening? <laughs> 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 well, Brett's going to put a divider up for us that, that, that <laughs> next time. No, we like the, the fanfare at, uh, at Derry. But, um, no, uh, we want to thank everybody here as well. Um, but uh, just a good night for the Trojans, uh, a night uh, where they uh, pull off another victory and they win it by the score of 35-21. Coach, you can go through the uh, recap for us. All righty, we'll start back at the first half. Derry got on board at the 629 mark of the first quarter, 52-yard drive. It was Ahmad Ward from 19 yards out, and Gabe Guest had the extra point. Trojans led 7-2. Uh, tied the game at the 11.55 mark of the second quarter. It was a 64-yard drive, and it was a pass from from backup quarterback Chris Daly to Carter Schrock from six yards out. Gabe Suman had the extra point, and we're all in, all tied up 7-all. The Trojans took the lead again at the 7.39 mark of the second quarter, 70-yard drive, capped by a four-yard pass from Mason Beeman to uh, Ahmad Ward. Guess again added the extra point, and we went in to halftime with the Trojans leading 14-7. to In the second half, Derry increased their lead to 21-7 at the 3.56 mark of the third quarter, 53-yard drive. It was a three-yard run by uh, Ahmad Ward, and Guess again kicked the extra point, and the Trojans were up then 21 to 7. The Trojans increased their lead to 28 to 7 at the 250 mark of the third quarter. It was a 70-yard drive, all on the ground by Damari Robinson 
on one play, and the Trojans again went up 28 to 7. The uh, Vikings came back to pull within a couple touchdowns at the 558 mark of the fourth quarter. There's a 40 yard drive capped by a seven yard run by Carter Schrock. Gabe Suman added the extra point and made the score to Derry 28 and Apollo Ridge 14. The Trojans went up again 35 to 14, and it was a 24 yard drive. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it was a 60 or 76 yard drive, and it was a 38 yard Demory Robinson run. And Guess added the extra point, and it was 35 14. The final score came at the 147 mark of the fourth quarter, and it was a one play 43 yard drive from, it was a pass from Schrock to Worm. And um, the extra point was good. By and it made the final score then 35 to 21 in favor of Derry. Taking a look at some stats, um, Apollo Ridge rushed for 102 yards. The Trojans had 263 on on the ground, uh, passing Apollo Ridge 180. Derry 26 total yards. For Paula Ridge, 282. For Derry, 289. Take a look at some uh, individual uh, stats. For the Trojans, Ahmad Ward, 21 carries, 96 yards, two touchdowns. Damari Robinson had four carries, 111 yards, and two touchdowns. Beeman was 5 of 13, 26 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. For Paula Ridge, Carter Schrock had 18 carries for 90 yards and a touchdown through the air. Schrock was 12 of 27, 174 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. And Chris Daly was one of one for six yards and one touchdown. Their leading receiver was Corey McIntosh, six catches for 66 yards. And... So there you have it. Penalties, I, I have uh, Paula Ridge with seven, the Trojans with uh, four. You do an amazing job with that, Coach. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, my hand cramps. All right. We have one more break to get to here on the Amerisur Financial Post Game Show. We'll name our player of the game coming up right after this. Trojans win it tonight, 35-21. Now that you're 15, we really need to talk about checking. Checking? Introducing the new Amerisurf Student Life Checking Account. So you would have a free Visa check card and mobile and online banking. Oh, and there are low ATM fees. Super cool. So can we sign me up? Play. Like... How about now? Get started with the Student Life Checking Account. It's the newest way that Amerisurf is banking for life. Message and data rates may apply. Check with your mobile carrier. Member FDIC. Barclays Dairy King has portions so big you may want to share them with a friend or share them with your brother. Hey, that's my strawberry milkshake! Maybe not. Barclays Dairy King has been serving up the tastiest ice cream to the dairy community for over 40 years. Stop in and try one of our delicious sundaes, our legendary banana split, or our soft serve ice cream in a cone littered with sprinkles. Okay, you can have some. Barclays Dairy King, West 4th Avenue in Derry. The McCabe Funeral Home has been thoughtfully assisting the dairy community in their time of need for over 45 years. The McCabe Funeral Home offers various funeral services, including traditional and non-traditional arrangements and pre-arrangements. They also offer a military funeral honor ceremony, which consists of the folding and presentation of the United States flag to the veteran's family and the playing of taps. Please visit McCabeFuneralHomes.com. The McCabe Funeral Home, West 3rd Avenue, in Derry. And we're on the AmeriServe postgame show here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. want to thank AmeriServe and all of our fine sponsors for uh, bringing us Derry Area High School football each and every week, each and every year. Uh, let's take a look now at our 
player of the game brought to you by Pit Stop Pizza in Sunoco. They will receive not only a large one-topping pizza, but also a car wash. And uh, I'm going to go with uh, Mason Beeman tonight, Coach. I know the stats weren't gaudy by him, but he got the job done. He also recovered two very important onside kicks, and he made some plays defensively as well. I thought well-rounded all around. Uh, Mason Beeman uh, picks up our uh, player of the game this yeah, evening. Yeah, and he also uh, had a couple nice runs there tonight, John. Yep. And, and uh, you know, threw some nice balls. And, and un- unfortunately, the one uh, long one was just – uh, out of the reach of uh, uh, Damari, but uh, yeah, Nabeeman played a good game tonight. Next week is homecoming. Trojan Stadium will be there with all of the action beginning at uh, 620. Trojans take on the Sarah Catholic Eagles trying to go to 3-0. and Sarah Catholic off to a rough start record-wise, and then the unfortunate situation that happened there, they did not play uh, tonight, so they will be uh, coming into Trojan Stadium with no wins on no. the season, but they're not a bad team. No, and they're not going to be able to do any practices until uh, Wednesday, I believe. So, Yeah, yep. yep. but they will be a formidable opponent. We know that. Our player of the game, again, Mason Beeman. Congratulations to him. Let's take a look real quick at some scores here before we get out of here. Penn Trafford leads Hemfield 28-18 to in the fourth quarter. Jeanette beats Charleroi tonight 35-7. Mount Pleasant 45, Freeport 23. Gateway all over Plum 49-14. North Catholic 28, Kiski area 7. Still Valley uh, trounces Ligonier Valley tonight. Don't have a final on that one, but I do know that was the case. Franklin Regional 55-7. And uh, that is now a final over undefeated. Well, not anymore. The Shaler Titans. And then Latrobe, 37. Laurel Highlands, nothing. That was that last report in the fourth quarter. Woodland Hills in the fourth quarter leads Norwin, 23-13. Thank you so much to Shirley Flickinger for all of her hard work on that. Once again tonight, thanks to John DePalma stepping up as a pinch hitter for Tom Esposito, who they're standing right beside each other now, and John's daughter Frankie to his right. But uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Bob, next week we go to Derry. Do it again. All right, Trojans off to a great start here in the conference. They're 2-0, 3-2 overall. Until next week, I'm John Flickinger for Bob Lasinski. Have a great weekend, everybody, and good night.